Happy Holy Day, Moors, and welcome to House of Reawakening Minds. House of Reawakening Minds exists to provide for exploration and practice of spirituality in an enlightened community dedicated to honoring the myriad of sacred pathways to the universal creator. We are a holistic center for spiritual grounding, free thought, self-discovery, and more science, an awakening experience for all ages. Tonight, we are pleased to bring to you once again, our national grand sheep, Taj Tariq Bey, as he presents the killing of Christ and mastering the monads. Islam, assalamu alaikum, salam. Wadamakum, Otep, etc. Now, the subject tonight is um, the killing of Christ and mastering the monad. Purpose of the subject is, as usual, to counter the dark priesthood, which has been problematic for Midgard Earth and thus the people on the Earth, and particular, particularly the people on the surface Earth. And it's important for the people to recognize and comprehend not just actions of people, but motive of people, not just the conditions uh, of humanity, but the much of the origin of the problems that um, humanity suffers in this day and time particularly and in past times, past generations, relative to both spiritual development, the lack thereof, financial security, the lack thereof, educational and erudition security, or the lack thereof, and justice, or Jesus symbolizing justice, and the lack thereof, and logically, the resulting miseries that uh, all living life on the planet has suffered. Therefore, subject matter is the killing of Christ. Now you have a true social, spiritual, and political metaphor in that statement or the lynching in the modern terms of Christ or the assassination of Christ or the hanging of Christ on the cross, etc. So you have the metaphors of and symbolic re, uh, uh, meanings, one being cosmological and one being uh, social, economic, and political. And so we're going to talk about these things to clear up some matters because we know as a general rule, the masses at large are held hostage to concepts about, i.e. religion on all fronts, misrepresentations of religion on all fronts, um, misrepresentation of the Christ on most fronts. So we're gonna talk this. When one wants to have a comprehension or understanding of a subject matter, it is rightful and intelligent for one to go to the origin of these words, phrases, concepts, and principles that evolve among humanity that we have called philosophies and religion. Most people will end their quest to uh, research what they have been told spirituality is and what they have been told religion is um, are not in the same venues told the truth of the origin of some of these things because what happens and what will happen indeed is that most of the institutions that have been promoting these different venues such as religion, spirituality, etc. And we're not just talking about the venues, we're talking about the founders of these venues and the operators of these venues 
their greater concern is that uh, with the truth being known of the foundation of the origin of things, words, phrases, and uh, um, philosophical concepts, that most of their institutions would collapse. And therefore, they are reluctant to tell the truth to the people of the origin of these things. Uh, now, let's get clear of what Christ is. And we're talking Christ with a K. And so we're actually talking about the potential of all the living beings here on Midgard in particular, because this is the particular earth that we're making reference to. And those of you among us who are jumpers know exactly what I'm talking about. And um, also the concepts that the people have been told of both time, etc., distinguish from dimension, and that's again back to you jumpers, who could help in these matters telling the people the truth, um, <clears throat> recognize that much uh, of the con and many of the concepts that the people have are incorrect. So now when you uh, look at your different books of the sun, which are referred to as holy books, keep in mind the word holy is derived from Sanskrit, ancient Asiatic African linguistic form that um, means actually the sun. And so holy means, uh, is derived from the word halig. And so the word halig is H-A-L-I-G. Halig means sun or he burns, i.e. or that whole or the full cycle, etc. And so the sun in relationship to this particular solar system is a source of both light and heat and life or source of life, etc. And therefore the sun has much to do with all uh, civilized culture on the planet Midgard Earth. Also in relationship to metaphors and allegorical stories which have been told in ancient African lore and uh, what people may call mythologies and in the traditions and customs have relationship with the cosmos because that's the root of the culture on Midgard Earth. And in particularly uh, relative to the heavens or to the ethereal plane, uh, you're dealing with what we refer to as the spheres satellites and planets. And so in relationship to Midgard Earth and in relationship to the, the movement of, or the rhythm of the blood, the rhythm of the heart, uh, the rhythm of the waters, the rhythm of the rivers, the river, the rhythms of the oceans, i.e. the rhythm of the tides are affected most directly and immediately by the moon. And so we look at the moon and we look at the sun and we look at Venus and the other stars, et cetera, and their relationship with us at Midgard Earth. And over the millennia have calculated those relationships. And this is why all of your symbolisms in so-called religions, et cetera, presented to the world deal with stars and the sun and the moon. And it is well known that your ancient uh, Sumerians, ancient uh, Hittians, ancient Moabites, ancient Canaanites, ancient Chaldeans, ancient Hikupta or Kukti that you call Egypt, Mesopotamia, uh, Eritrea, Ethiopia, Yemen, and all of these other areas of Africa, etc., must be taken into context with their connection to Amarok or America and the Gulf of Mexico, where the tip or the northern part of what is now called Africa was actually a part of the Gulf of Mexico. And so when you do research archaeologically, 
and do research into the customs and cultures around the world, you will find a definitive and indisputable tie. However, that information is not promoted because it will spoil the game of, of mental mind control that has been perpetrated upon humanity and against humanity by the priesthood and those who have been uh, falsely and under de facto and pseudo methodologies ruling over the earth, its resources and the people of the earth. And so much of what we're talking about is actually a countermeasure to the dark priesthood that the people have learned to trust in the name of religion. And I say that distinctly in the name of religion, not in religion, in the name of religion not in government, in the name of government, not in law, in color of law, not in jurisdiction, in a color of jurisdiction, not in money, money and finance, but in the color of money and finance, etc. And so it's important for people to know um, or to look at the social, political and economic problems that um, that are befalling the people in the modern times, or in, in particularly in the current events, to understand why the priesthood is smothering the light, i.e., uh, or killing Christ, because that's not a new thing. The motive, past and present, being the same, but because people in general are not aware of dimensional change. Uh, some would call it time, others would call it chronology, etc. And those of you among us who are jumpers know exactly what I'm talking about. Um, and uh, it's also remind you of your responsibility to have gone against the grain, even though we know that the dark priesthood have been murdering anyone who tells the truth about what's going on on this planet. Um, and so many of them are reluctant. However, the interest is, are you going to continue to sacrifice the generations that are here and uh, disregard the generations that have gone before you, i.e. your ancestors, and totally neglect the generations to come because you fear to tell the truth about the dark priesthood of the Romans who have been the major perpetrators of the frauds upon the earth and blocking the spiritual developments of the people by misrepresenting religion, misrepresenting law, misrepresenting jurisprudence, misrepresenting finance, misrepresenting government, etc., and have gone unchallenged. But it is um, important for people to understand that the divine rule or the divine right unalienable that uh, is given or that exists in right of birth from the womb of mother to all humanity is referred to also as sovereignty. Uh, often when people talk about sovereignty, there's this misconception that the, the, the argument or the presentment of a sovereign argument um, has its place in only what we would call the lower activations of the chakra, etc., in society or uh, in the political realm. However, it must be known by all the people that chakra, Sanskrit for chakra, activation is sovereignty. And the reason they won't tell you this is because they want you to believe that a sovereignty argument has its place only in the political realm. But understand, not unlike as an example of grade school, kindergarten, compared to um, elementary school, junior high school, high school, collage, university, is a matter of degrees. Separate only in their degree, but not in the intent for erudition to be dispensed in, in the venue of education, etc. 
the issue would be in the process of your initial learning, it would be considered more in the process of education, but where the mastering comes, then you would have what you call erudition, which is totally related to a proper education. And logically, those who would, um, how do you say, subdue, subvert the sovereignty of, annotative, enslave humanity would not make the reference that sovereignty is related to the activation of the cockroach, etc. Now, Cockra, that's uh, C-A-K-R-A, uh, which is also known as Chakra, which is C-H-A-K-A, -A, which is Sanskrit for actually what is known as the ritual in ancient Africa and Asia and on the planet, known as um, the activation of the pineal gland, i.e., or the activation of Christ. The um, activation of the higher dimensions or energy wheels of the sun, the discs of the body, where the reference in the uh, ancient Hinduism uh, with the six chakras or in ancient Chaldea with the seven chakras, which are the energy wheels that are expressed from the, from the groin area on up to the pineal gland, which in African culture, is represented by the tassel and the cord and the tassel on the fez, etc., and also on the uh, cap and gown, which is also known as a mortar board that's been used universally, um, adopted from ancient Sumerian, Moabite, Canaanite, Moorish culture, which is known as a fez. All right, so when you see those perforations on the top of the fez, and you see the umbilical cord, the finial umbilical cord, the ball of mud that represents the earth and the tassels, the degrees of the earth uh, and the moon dancing around the earth and the, the earth dancing or spiraling what people see from the eye, from the appearance of visuality around the sun when it's actually a spiraling behind the sun as all of the planets do. And so the Fez, the Moorish Fez represents cosmos. We won't get into that at this time, but I want you to be, uh, recognize that. Your um, activation of the chakras, etc., or the energy wheels, most people make reference to the um, seven chakras or the six or the seven chakras going from the groin on up to the crown chakra etc., which is also why the, the, the Fez is known as the crown of the sun or the corona sun or the disc of the sun, i.e. the chakra pinnacle, etc. Um, so the activation of that is in its real philosoph uh, philosophy uh, in relationship to African culture, getting back in contact with or becoming one with all universal law some say one with allah some say one with the source etc the dark priesthood for the sake of claiming themselves as god as demonstrated in the septuaginta in uh, thessalonians 1 and 2 transliterated and translated into the bible where the dark priesthood declared themselves god or the hybrid interloper operating on Midgard Earth have been for these last, um, say, millennia or so claiming to be God on the Earth. And of course, the subsequent idol God systems that has revolved from these hybrids operating on the Earth is certainly problematic. And of course, from this, you get the, um, the idol God systems of sales of selling gods to people, promising them uh, both salvation, redemption, and a whatever uh, flavor of Kool-Aid the people are willing to drink. And the only ones that get wealthy is the corrupt officers of the corrupt governments on the planet. And of course, the priesthood who works as a, what you would call shepherd in between them and the flock of humanity 
who have actually been uh, subdued or subjugated by them, commonly known in modern times as enslavement, etc. That's connotative enslavement. All right, so that's a connotative application of the word slave, which actually means Slovakian. But in a connotative manner, it actually means those who have been subdued, abused, and their estates have been robbed, i.e. by the feudal lords. And so the feudal lords that you're dealing with now would be the Circle Church and the Chancery operating from Fleet Street, England, in connection with and on behalf of the Pope of Rome and the Bishopric of Rome in conjunction with puppet governments around the planet who have been pretending to be legitimate pedigree of mothers to the matriarchy principle of governing different parts of the land under international agreement, i.e. sovereigns. However, they're not sovereigns. They've been lying. The sovereign is you. And the deal, this is why you see a lot of people, whenever uh, people get any little bit of, a little bit of civic information, or knowledge or civic instruction and learn a little bit about uh, jurisprudence, ancient and modern jurisprudence and start looking into it, why it creates a problem for the priesthood because they become awakened. But keep this in mind, when you speak, when you act, when you think, the very action of energy and output is an activation of chakra. That was, must be understood. Now, as far as for those of you, um, many of you already know what chakra is, and some uh, are less aware of it. However, when you're dealing with any of your major religions on the planet Earth, understand what they're veiling in most of the allegorical stories, signs and symbols is and was and is chakra activation. They won't tell you that. As an example, when you hear the term anointeth my head with oil, you're really talking about an activation of the chakras. So you're really talking about caduceus. You're really talking about kundalini. You're really talking about activating Christ. Now, so the killing of Christ is actually the issue that we have on Midgard Earth, arguing with the priesthood who have been misrepresenting the prophets and murdering the prophets and suppressing the spiritual and true evolutionary development of humanity by giving them false doctrine and also misrepresenting the symbolisms that already exist prior to their power grab. As an example, and this is for many of you because you'll see a lot of this going on right now. So all of the symbolisms generally of Africa, Asia, or ancient, that actually represent symbolically our relationship with the heavens, i.e. with the cosmos, uh, is misrepresented or either used in a dark cycle concept by the hybrid rulers who have been corrupting all government on the earth, corrupting all religion on the earth, corrupting all economic systems on the earth, corrupting all jurisprudence on the earth, and then blaming a mystical devil for what is really coming from the dark priesthood, etc. the killing of Christ. So the killing of Christ, as an example, another metaphor uh, or story that is given to cover up the priesthood as an example of being the real demons. And it doesn't mean that all people don't have their own little devils, if you get the point, because both your God and devil is in you, not outside you. So let's get that clear. You'll see like in the story of, of the assassination and murder of Christ and the symbolic as Jesus Christ, if you, if you get the point. So understand Christ and Jesus are really separate things. But the, the Christ principle is what Jesus in the story, which is anthropomorphic, is telling humanity, as I am, all men shall be. What I have done, all men can do. And some of you will even do greater works than I have done. What he's saying that you, some of you, will even 
go higher into the cycle wheels of the sun than he has, but he has more than enough to demonstrate love to man for to help you to develop. However, what you actually see is them deifying Jesus rather than really teaching the cosmological Sumerian Canaanite Moabite teachings that he presented, which is also why he said, um, it is not my will that I do, but the will of the Father. What he's telling you, in this matter of the human development, it goes even beyond himself. However, he come to assist you or to show the way. Um, or even where you hear the term in, in the African philosophy where the symbol, the, the anthropomorphic Jesus says, um, even I don't know, only the father knows. That's what it symbolizes. But yet the people would uh, accuse him of being the father. Yet he and the father are one only in the print principle of consanguinity or what you will call lineage. You get the point? And so he would also say, for those who miscomprehend what the metaphor is, he would say, all of you are gods. That's what he means. So now if you don't study the culture uh, and the traditions of Africa and Asia, you will take all these things as being literal when they're not literal. They're metaphorical. They are symbolic, etc. But in the alterations and in the transliterations out of their original tongues and concepts, the hybrid hybrids have actually corrupted it and actually used the dark side. I'll give you another example. Whereas Africans and Asians always look at the crescent moon and the phases of the moon. So you have the eight phases of the moon. And so you have the crescent moon, etc. And then you have Venus and Jupiter in relationship to the moon in the heavens by which you can tell seasons, seasons, yes, and cycles of the planets, etc. And actually calendars are based on that. This is why you see in all religious orders, you see the star being used. And you see the moon being used and the symbol of Venus, which is a pentagram, you see. And so you call the people of Asia and Africa and particularly in the Western Hemisphere, people of the moon and sun, which is also when you do research of the Americas, you'll see that the America is referred to as the temple of the moon and sun. That is fact. But now you're going back to its ancient the ancient culture of the people and the origin of the people. Problem has been is that uh, those who have been controlling the, system, uh, of the systems of education never say that because they have morphed, i.e. the ancient Sumerian, Chaldean, Moabite, Canaanite, Hittite culture into a format whereas the hybrid Romans have been ruling the planet Earth and have been corrupting the Earth. Another example, where you see the horns of the cow, of the cow arched, arched like this, which represent fecundity. Now, so now you're talking about the moon and Venus that has direct energy effect on the womb of both the, the human kingdom and also the animal kingdom, birth cycles, um, the movement of zygotes and eggs and ovum from the uterus, uh, from the fallopian tubes to the uterus is all governed by the moon, including the flow and the rhythm of the blood. And therefore, symbolically in Africa, they recognize the cow or the horns of the cow in relationship to the moon and fertility and fecundity. Now, the hybrids present that symbolism now as demonology, when it's actually dealing with fecundity and fertility. So whereas its original, original format is fecundity and fertility, the hybrids in these days refer to it as devil and now tell the people that it is Things like Baphomet, which is a symbolism that this French hybrid um, 
made putting all the symbols of Africa together and then calling them Baphomet and i.e. the devil. And so you see a lot of true Asiatic African culture is being rejected by Asiatic Africans thinking it's the devil when it's actually the original culture of the cosmos in symbolism. Those refinements must be addressed in order for our people to get back to the state of mind of their ancient mothers and fathers and not get into what has been the pattern and that has been throwing out the baby with the bathwater as they're trying to fix these problems at Midgard Earth, which are both social, political, spiritual, and economic. Um, and without a, with a lack of knowledge, they actually play into the dark side, not understanding the truth of the culture. And this is why in, if you're dealing with linguistic form, you go into etymology. If you're dealing with the uh, structures of government and the structures of uh, kingdoms evolving into nations, et cetera, you go into anthropology and um, epistemology, et cetera. And so these disciplines uh, and the seven liberal arts that were always promoted by Africans are uh, dealing with logic, arithmetic, et cetera, why those are not taught in what you would call the hybrid schools controlled particularly by uh, Rockefeller and uh, Gates families, et cetera, uh, particularly since 1902. Although some of the um, mind control systems were also adopted from uh, hybrid German experiments by uh, doing suffering on animals, uh, by what you call feeding them, then starving them, then feeding them, then starving them, then probing them with electrical instruments to cause pain, then removing it, and then using that whole psychology on humanity, which is exactly what they've been doing. This is where the M, M, uh, uh, M13, M12 uh, operations of the mind control systems that they're using today um, have their origin, etc. And so whenever they are studying humanity, they always use dark side magic on, on humanity. And um, by virtue of claiming African culture and then corrupting it, they say that they have stolen our jewels and have now ruled the world. And this is where you get in the book of uh, John 8, 44, where the metaphor of Jesus claims the one who claims to be a Jew is not a Jew and that he's actually a the demon. He's making reference to those who are governing, etc. Those who have stolen the wealth of the people of the world, those who claim to be who they are not, and then at the same time subtly claiming to be victim, and yet at the same time ruling the world and stealing all of the resources of the world, etc., in the name of idol gods, etc. That's what that represents in truth from African culture. Of course, from those who have metaphorically and politically altered the books out of their original tongue and customs have created this metaphorical Jesus Christ that that is actually a fiction as opposed to a metaphor and a symbolism of actually telling the movement of the cosmos and also the activation of the light or the sun discs in the body, the energy wheels known as Kundalini, known as Christ, um, known as Kakra, known as Chakra, known as anointing my head with oil, known as the activation of the single eye, dealing with all of the energies of smell, touch, taste, hearing, sight, etc., with insight and intuition, the seven coming together as one and activating by activating the dimension possibilities of the human being, which is called the eye of Horus. And so the single eye is not evil, it's the activation of sovereignty, i.e. the chakras. Now in the physical, in the physical operation of humanity, so you're dealing with um, at least 114 recognized energy wheels in the body. In the body, we we talk about we talk about the seven chakras. And Dr. G, can you uh, share a little bit with us at the time? Do you want me to post the? Oh the yes, picture? Um, yes. I put this graphic up. It's gonna probably go across to you, but yes, it's showing. This is what. Oh, good, good. That's that. good. 
that's good. So share that with the people to give you know a recognition of the symbolism. Now that's symbolic of what activates in the body or the Christ. And so when the act when you activate the pineal gland, that's ascending unto heaven. So when they say that Jesus ascended unto heaven, what they're saying is that he activated the chakras. Now to formulate or what you would call to master in general all the chakras that's necessary or all the energy wheels that's necessary in the physical operation of life meaning that what you do in the physical plane you need no more activation than a trinity of the seven or 21 activated wheels in the activation of the energies um that would be the pinnacle of what is necessary to operate in the physical plane in all levels of what you might consider successes however this is the however activate one more and even some of you who've activated those 21 activate one more then you start abandoning the venues that are here which is why many masters refer to it not being necessarily necessarily uh, to your best interest to just activate chakras and particularly people who may activate them artificially like um sweat lodges and uh certain mushrooms that was asked about ayahuasca yeah certain mushrooms and uh, 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 certain herbs to artificially activate the chakras because there's a responsibility. Now, this is not what does not take place naturally because it will take place naturally and it also takes place as, and particularly with Midgard at this time, because this is another subject, but related. Midgard has already gone through the futon belt. So we're already in another energy or um, that the earth along with the other planets in this particular solar system are already in another energy. And so they've left the energy of the Piscean constellation and are now in the energy of what is known as the Aquarian or the Aquarius constellation, which is another energy. And so the belief systems that the dark priesthood had mastered in the last millennia and actually been ruling the world is over. Therefore, not because necessarily we or anyone else disagrees, but nature herself disagrees with the priesthood or what you call the divine energy or source demonstrates that that must die. However, what you're dealing with is the dark priesthood having been spoiled by ruling this Midgard, particularly the surface of Midgard Earth, uh, for such a time and reaping, sucking, vampiring, exploiting the wealth, the resources, the peoples, and sacrificing both people and animals to their own selfish means, um, have only for the most part been successful because the people have been blind and been trained and accepting operating in the lower chakras commonly known in general as calling as being called blind faith so the blind faith represents that the people were steeped in the lower chakras as a general whole those among the people who evolve or activate the highest chakras, which would be symbolized by Jesus, as an example, who ascended unto heaven or activated other chakras, would look as weird to people who does not understand because of his disconnection from the lower chakras, which means the value or the vestment or the connection to earthly things in the value systems that we had adopted were abandoned and this is the other issue about the activating of the chakras or the higher chakras because 
to master all that is in the physical plane and to achieve all that one may want to achieve in the physical plane requires no more than 21 or a trinity of the seven. That's the mind, body, and spirit principle, trinity, i.e. your pyramidal, equilateral pyramid, um, also referred to um, as equal rights for all in society, etc., i.e. the great seal. Uh, you step above that just like you graduate from um, kindergarten, preschool. Uh, now you're in elementary. Now you're studying the elements. Then you go into junior high. Uh -huh. So now you're raising or activating chakras, activating thoughts, activating a knowledge or an exercise into the disciplines. Then you go into high school. Then you go into collage of information, a collage, kaleidoscope, collage of information. Then you're ready for the universe. So now it's called university. So once you're ready for the universe, it's you don't dismiss kindergarten, but you're not ready to visit your kindergarten teacher every every two weeks, you know, for, on sake of your good memories. And it's not so much of whether the, the teacher is there because you you know you have we have our growth relationships and our experiences you don't reject kindergarten but you're not ready to go back there now the, the issue is is that the priesthood has kept humanity for the most part in kindergarten and in elementary school and have been deliberately suppressing their exposure to some information so that they don't evolve in sovereignty because you cannot enslave a sovereign. Let's get that very clear. But people must understand and comprehend that the sovereign is not outside you. The sovereign is in you. This is the reason why they teach the, the dynamics, the false pseudo dynamics of the God principle or the source principle um, outside of the self so that you never examine the self and go in the self, and we're not talking selfishness. We're talking studying the self, comprehending the self, learning of the higher self, distinguishing it from the lower self, and in that process, you will actually be activating the chakras. But you will have a learning and experiential uh, evolution, whereas as you go into or activate the higher chakras, that you're prepared to take the responsibilities with it. because And this is where we uh, uh, many have problems artificially activating the chakras because keep in mind when you do, many of the value systems that are, are uh, how to say, we're attached to in the physicality, which is limited to the trinity of the seven, which would, would, which would be 21, now you're all, how do you say, no longer kind of like harmonic with the club or uh, in the public, in the general people that you're around, you don't invest in the world. This is what, where that term, which is unexplained in its ancient Sumerian origin, where it says, I'm in the world, but not of the world. That's what that means. That's really what that means. So when you activate the higher chakras, you start disconnecting from the lower chakras. This is also symbolized by the anthropomorphic atom with the great leaf over his groin. It's also uh, symbolized with the uh, Samson and Delilah story. Um, these are metaphorical. This means conquering or overcoming the lower chakras because as they begin, your, your lower three chakras are in the groin area. Um, also to help you along the way, for those of you who have been uh, shared um, with you Adeptus instructions, as an example from the illustrious prophet Noble Ali, I will share with you uh, chapter one of the Circle Seven Quran of the Moorish Holy Temple of Science and the Moorish Te uh, uh, Science Temple of America. And keep in mind the fundamentals and principles of this knowledge come down from our ancient mothers and fathers and was prepared by Nobudrali for the people, for the redemption of these people out of the dead culture 
into the light. So you're always talking about light. When you're talking about light, you're talking about karest. So the deal of it is the priesthood has been dimming the light or trying to block the sun, not unlike what you see them doing with chemtrails in these recent years since the 50s, i.e. to block out the sun, etc., so that the people's energy wheels aren't activated in the Aquarian light. So it goes deeper than what appears on the surface, i.e. become sovereign. And when they become sovereign, they cannot be enslaved. So keep that in mind as we're talking. And so I'm going to go into chapter one of the Circle 7 Quran and pay attention and take notes so that you can see, i.e., the ancient Sumerian, Chaldean, uh, Eritrean, Ethiopian, Hikupta, Yemen, Sudanese, Nubia culture that's embodied in the philosophy. Circle 7 Quran, chapter 1. Um, the creation and fall of man. Time never was when man was not. If life of man at any time began, a time would come when it would end. The thoughts of Allah cannot be circumscribed and no finite mind can comprehend things infinite. All infinite things are subject to change. All finite things will cease to be because there was a time when they were not. The bodies and the souls of men are finite things and they will change. Yea, from the finite point of view, the time will come when they will be no more. But man himself is not the body, not the soul. He is a spirit and a part of Allah. Creative fate gave to man, to spirit man, a soul that he might function on the plane of soul. Gave him a body of flesh that he might function on the plane of things made manifest. Why did creative fate give to man a soul that he might function on the plane of soul? Why did creative fate give to soul a body of the flesh that he might function on the plane of things that are made manifest? Here now, ye cherubim, ye seraphim, ye angels, and ye men. Here now, O protoplast, and earth, and plant, and beast. Here now, ye creeping things of earth, ye fish that swim, ye birds that fly. Here now, ye winds that blow, ye thunders and ye lightnings of the sky. Here now, ye spirits of fire, of water, earth, and air. Here now, O oh, everything that is, or was, or evermore will be. For wisdom speaks from the highest plane of spirit life. Man is a thought of Allah, and all thoughts of Allah are infinite. They are not measured up by time. For things that are concerned with time begin and end. The thoughts of Allah are everlasting of the past unto the never ending things to come. And so is man, the spirit man. But like every other thought of Allah was but a seed, a seed that held within itself the potencies of Allah, just as the seed of any plant of earth holds deep within its attributes itself the attributes of every part of that a special plant so spirit man as seed of allah held deep within himself the attributes of every part of allah 
Now seeds are perfect, yea, as perfect as the source from which they come. But they are not unfolded into life made manifest. The child is as perfect as the mother is. So man, the seed, must be deeply planted in a soul that he might grow, unfold, as does, pardon me, as does the bud unfold to show the flower. The human seed that came forth from the heart of Allah was full ordained to be the Lord of plane of soul and of the plane of things made manifest. So Allah, the husbandman of everything that is, threw forth the human seed into the soil of soul. It grew apace, and man became a living soul. And he became the Lord of the kingdom of soul. Hark now, let every creature hear. The plane of soul is but the ether of the spirit plane vibrating not so fast. And in the slower rhythm of this plane, the essences of life are manifest. The perfumes and the odors and the true sensations and the all of love manifest. And these soul attributes become a body beautiful. A multitude of lessons man must learn upon the plane of soul. And here he tarries many ages until his lessons are all learned. And upon the boundary of the plane of soul, the ether began to vibrate slower still. And then the essences took on a final garb and clothed and were clothed in flesh. And man was clothed in flesh. Perfected man must pass through all the ways of life. And so a carnal nature was full manifest. A nature that sprang forth from fleshly things. Without a foe, a soldier never knows his strength. And thought must be developed by the exercise of strength. And so this carnal nature soon became a foe that man must fight that he might be the strength of Allah made manifest. Let every living thing stand still and hear. Man is the Lord of all the plane of manifest, of protoplast, of mineral, of plant, of beast, but he gave up his birthrights just to gratify his lower self. But man will regain his lost estate, his heritage, but he must do it in a conflict that cannot be told in words. Yea, he must suffer trials and tribulations manifold, but let him know that cherubim and seraphim that rule the stations of the sun and the spirit of the mighty Allah, who rule the solar stars, are his protectors and his guide, and they will lead to victory. Man will be fully saved, redeemed, perfected by the things he suffers on the plane of flesh and on the plane of soul. When man has conquered carnal things, his garb of flesh will then have served his purpose well and will fall, will be no more. Then he will stand untrammeled on the plane of soul where he must full complete his victories. Unnumbered foes will stand before man upon the plane of soul. These he must overcome, yea, overcome them every one. And thus hope will ever be his beacon light. And there is no failure for the human soul, for Allah is leading on and victory is sure. Man cannot die. The spirit man is one with Allah. And while Allah lives, man cannot die. And when man has conquered every foe upon the plane of soul, the seed will have full opened out and will have unfolded into the holy breath. And the garb of soul will then have served its purpose well. And man will need it nevermore. And it will pass and be no more. 
and man will then attain unto blessedness of perfectness and be at one with Allah. Now, when you study the culture and the traditions from which that come, you will go back to what is known the at man or the spark of life or the many different names that have been given to what we refer to as the energy source from which we all come. So we may choose to call it Allah. Some people say loosely God, but God is a plural principle, it's etc. And that must be told, etc. And so the issue of it must be distinguished. And the best way to distinguish it go back to the origin of these things to have a comprehension. So you must understand that man is going through evolutionary activity. And so the body and the soul and the mind and spirit, et cetera, are actually what you would call ascended dimensional planes and are actually vehicles that are used for actually the development of the monad or the atman. Now, back to the issue of chakra activation. This is why those who really have a comprehension of these activations of the higher chakras will tell sometimes the people that you should study the ancient culture so that you don't get tempted to bypass the human evolutionary development and artificially activate the chakras of because you may not be ready for what you're going to do or what you're because you're going to start disconnecting that's just just really the truth let's get Let's get past all the BS. When you activate the higher chakras, and I'm not saying don't do it, I'm saying do it with wisdom. You will start disconnecting from the physical values. People around you will not necessarily comprehend your value system because you are at this time, all for the most part, manifesting lower chakras and you see no other value or no other path. And this is where, as uh, when uh, they say Jesus is the light, once you are enlightened to other chakras, the things that you thought were important, like uh, kindergarten, become less important to you. Now your kindergarten, kindergarten buddies think you're out to lunch because you're not valuing necessarily the blocks with the letters on it and the little boats and the cars that they're sitting in the middle of the floor putting all together and you're building these Lego things and uh, you're not playing along with the club. So if you're not prepared to give up a lot of things in the physical plane, understand you will evolve anyway. And this is what's happening to humanity at large as we're going into the occurring energy. So many people are discomforted because it is no longer in the power of the dark priesthood to keep you under the blind faith. And so they're having a problem. So all of your governmental venues that have been absolutely corrupt, because they absolutely are, and the priesthood venue that has been absolutely corrupt, because they absolutely are, uh, and the metaphorical story where you see Jesus arguing with the Pharisees and the, the Sadducees, etc., is a demonstration really of you ascending into higher chakras, which is actually happening by reality of default going into the Aquarian energy. Being aware of that, be aware of um, your less vestment in things as they are because things as they are will not be, i.e. they have run their course, they will fall away. Um, so when you're talking about the uh, social economics, which is part of what's going on right now, Understanding that um, what you thought was the economic system was a misrepresented platform in the first place. So the economics is not necessarily going bad in the way that people may look at it. The falsehood is being uncovered. The fiction is being tossed away. The truth of economy can be recognized when you now look at the moon realistically as it should have been looked at relative to governing the tides, governing the womb, governing the great uh, value of resource on the planet, which is humanity. And of course, um, you have what appears to be conflict because people are evolving 
some knowingly and some unknowingly. And of course, it's creating for those who really don't know what's going on, it's creating a lot of confusion. So understanding that it's actually the activation of the chakras. Uh, some deliberate and some just by the nature of evolution or ascending unto heaven. So the ascending unto heaven is the activation of the chakras or the pineal gland and the producer's activity that's going on, whether you like it or not, um, so that you can have some comprehension of what's going on so we can better start to govern our mental government of self, etc. which is also why Noble Drawl reminded the Moors to be aware of your higher self and your lower selves. Why? Because when these things start activating, it's going to start dismantling institutions. And we're not talking about you, me, we dismantling them. We can help go along with the with what nature herself is doing. So divine nature is dismantling all these institutions. So don't be so, how do you say, forlorn or distressed that things are falling apart. It was and is inevitable. The advantage that you have, if you understand and comprehend what's going on, you can stop swimming against the tide. Start giving, getting in harmony with divine self, divine source, and harmonic with yourself, going back to the principles of your ancient mothers and fathers and not being so stressed with things falling apart around you, knowing that they must fall apart, also recognizing much of it that you have given value to never did have the value that you thought it had, but is in actuality in relationship to your development spiritually, and thus it's going to reflect on all other planes um, that it is an act of nature and an act of the activation of higher chakras, i.e. Uh, an evolutionary course of human development that is and was inevitable. So the more you know about your ancient culture and traditions, the more you will be able to handle the changes that have come, are coming, are happening, and will definitely happen. And so the institutions that you have maybe, let's say, we have evolved into depending upon know that there's more to life than them and that actually the dark priesthood have kept humanity at large in the dark and have been pretty much studying the light of your dna in order to snuff your life out so that they could continue to rule and so you see the dark priesthood of the aquarian of no the uh, pardon me i apologize the dark priesthood who have mastered their rulership in the Piscean light or in the Piscean energy or find it quite difficult to continue their rule in the Aquarian light or energy. The issue is that you must know that that's what's happening too. But you must also know also from an actual, not an opinionated position, um, humanity is evolving into what you would call a higher dimensional plane. So the higher activation of the dimensions is actually an activation of your higher chakras. They have an absolute correlative relationship. Um, nevertheless, our argument, um, or say our counter move where we're acting consciously is to help go, going along with nature, recognizing um, that is in the interest of humanity to, uh, how do you say, not necessarily get all so upset because um, the harlot, um, everybody discovering the harlot got crabs, and everybody been dancing with the harlot, and all of the harlot's stuff is going down, uh, all of the harlot's institutions are collapsing, all of the harlot's claim of jurisdictional powers is collapsing, all the harlots claim of jurisdictional economic power around the world is collapsing. All of the powers, mystical powers of the priesthood are being revealed as being fraudulent. All uh, the priesthood and the politicians are being exposed as both pervert pedophiles, 
frauds, murderers, thieves, and every other foul bird, etc. And the imagery that they have projected on the world is failing them. That's where they're upset. The masses are upset because they thought these people were holier than thou. Well, get over it. They're not. They all uh, got caught into the cycles of worshiping idol gods outside themselves and are kind of uncomfortable to have to discover that the God principle or the source is within and always was. Um, and now that in the Aquarian light, these chakras, higher chakras are being are, are, are activated that you should not be surprised, but you should be uh, willing to start studying yourselves and being harmonically in tune with self and helping others along who uh, have been blinded by blind faith by the dark priesthood who have been the vampires, the major vampires on the planet, etc. Uh, therefore, where they've been assassinating, crucifying, killing Christ, the real deal is as you start activating the Christ, you are actually starting to master the monad. So the monad is that spark of life that's within all of us that's also referred to as the Atman, which is also referred to as the Christ. And therefore, as the metaphorical Jesus would say, as I am, all men shall be what I've done, all men can do. And some of you will even do greater works than I have done, which, which means that you're in an era, in, in an era of cycle or dimension that the chakras are being activated. Can you add to that, Dr. J? I can't really add to it, but I'm, I'm holding um, in my hand a book that was written in 1991 entitled, um, it's called Generations, mm -hmm. The History of America's Future, 1584 to 2069. Yes. Okay. And one little interesting part, I just, I just opened it up and, and it, it talks about the different, you know how we talk about the boomers, the different generations and yeah, they how give them names. Yeah. There's one, the silent generation. Mm -hmm. And I think that silent would be the generation just before the boomers. Good. And it talks about um, the silent, and this was written in 1991. Yes, go ahead. The silent have never been and never will be collectively powerful, but will continue enriching others with a gentler kind of endowment until the next adaptive generation comes of age in the 2030s. No other generation will press the case for other directed social compassion, pluralism, sympathy for the underdog and procedural fairness. Here's the point I want to make. Nor will any other have the silent capacity for intergenerational understanding. The silent, and I'm thinking of you, can mediate the upcoming cultural clash between the boom and the 13th, which I think became the Xers. Mm. So too, listen at this, can they set the underlying rules of the game for the crisis of 20? 20. Mm, crisis. Mm -hmm. Now, this was written in 1991. Yes. Now, and so it, it, what, it's, what this book is showing is that everything that you were talking about happens in cycles. It's exactly. cyclical. So there, you can go back. This goes from 1584 up to forward to exactly. 2069. Yes. So we have, there's like a four, four cycles or so, and then they repeat. Exactly. Not just that. So therefore, this is back to the institutions that have been developed to support the systems of the ruling classes and the caste system artificially created will and must collapse. And because people have not known another way or other things, there's this concept among the masses that they must submit to the Bishop of Rome, i.e. the Federal Reserve, the IRS, the U.S. military complex, the U.S. Food and Drug Administration, and the vaccination operations of the dark priesthood, who have really actually been the enemies of humanity while pretending to be angels of the light. And, and that clash another, is taking place. May now. I add this? What we have now is something that most don't 
have not in the past had the benefit of and that is to see the changing of a cycle yes. most people live and die within a cycle it, never knowing the ones before the one that comes after exactly. it. and here we are at a time when we're seeing like you said the closing on of levels, one multiple on multiple levels. levels yeah so both spiritually uh, economically socially we're seeing the ending of one and the beginning of others and so there therefore comes the confusion of a conflict with many people because now we've gone from this uh, relative ease of living in what we thought was because the, the people are falling away from the senses of security in institutions that they thought were sound absolutely and solid and moral and ethical and are finding out they were absolutely not any of that but that it was an illusion of the world right so to lament to lament their passing is not in your interest therefore to prepare you for that which is coming you must be aware of the divine development of the activation of the shock and you must also be aware of what has already happened in the past because those who do not know that past are destined and doomed to because repeat it that now we're going back to what the etymology of the language format to understand that chakra is chakra and chakra is kundalini and the activation of kundalini is the reaching up for the light of god i.e the christ the power of the dark priesthood is that they've been crucifying christ now we're not talking about the yeah, metaphor they of the seasonal change whereas december the 22nd particularly in the western hemisphere that the sun goes to its lowest point and goes into a tomb for three days i.e is dormant etc and so we're talking about the changing of the season you see so that means that in african culture all right so the metaphor of the crucifixion of christ is in that in the cosmological realm now in the political social spiritual realm it is actually this the deliberate misinformation promoted against humanity in the dogmatic name of religion in order to suppress the activation of light or the chakras which is also why it has been primal with the dark priesthood through their war machines of pharmaceuticals to attack the activation of the chakras to keep the people in a low state of mind or within the lower chakras so that they could be ruled and that their birthright and sovereignty could be stolen and used for the enrichment of the priesthood who are really a body of demons now that's the truth <laughs> get over it because it's the truth which is also why they uh, uh they're quite upset when anyone mentions the word sovereignty because the people don't know and haven't been told that sovereignty is the activation of the chakras the discs the energy wheels and when you start activating them particularly non-artificially which means you have learned your lessons along the way and you're harmonic with it then nature herself removes you from out of the false jurisdiction of the dark priesthood which is most all of your so-called governmental politicians who are really for the truth of the matter is a bevy of thieves and vampires come together pretending to be the sovereign i.e they have claimed themselves to be god and put themselves on thrones claiming to be god and have been actually misgoverning midgard earth and that's the source of your economic problem your poverty your financial ruin the starvations that's been taking place on this planet all your wars etc has been from the dark priesthood who you thought was loving jesus and allah and god and all the sandwiches and stuff well uh they're your demons it doesn't mean that you ain't got your own too 
but know of your higher self and your lower self and aspire to that which is in your higher self and you're activating the chakras better divine and natural than artificial so don't be eating mushrooms and stuff <laughs> like really because <laughs> you got to be ready for what's coming because now keep in mind people are also um being told in recent times you know we're going into the fourth and fifth dimension and stuff which means you're you're losing not losing but you're evolving into light bodies it's for real so the light in in spite of it being artificially suppressed by the priesthood so we're not talking about um the natural development or evolution of the human etc out of the piscean energy clouds into the futon belt and into the energy of aquarius so you have a natural process but you also had the unnatural process with the priesthood who knew the truth and wouldn't walk in the truth themselves have had a field day with humanity in the era of pisces and have actually pushed the, the earth and the people particularly of the surface into darkness which has caused much of this misery artificially just want to point that out to you so they're not the priesthood ain't innocent and the devil didn't do it they did and you've been helping them by going along with the bs So as these institutions start collapsing or i.e. falling apart, don't be disappointed. Understand that it's actually a natural process of the Aquarian lights. Now, of course, as this comes about, um, you have the issue of you, i.e. in harmony with nature, evolving to a higher dimensions by virtue of the fact that your chakras Chakras are being activated. So recognize what you're going through. Not justifying it, recognize what you're going through. We also have to recognize that the heart chakra, is, the activation of the heart chakra, chakra is under attack. Of course. Because that is the, when you get to the fourth chakra, the, the heart chakra, that's why when you saw the Many symbol of the, of the pictures of of of, of so called Jesus Symbolic. symbolically, you would see that the heart was chakra. illuminated. The heart chakra. We were thinking the heart, but that was the chakra, and that that's that mid midway between the lower and the higher self is the heart chakra, and very important. So that there's so many things that are coming after us in a way to keep our heart in a state of 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 flux. Of, 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 of erraticism, of anger, and all of these things. It's like we're on a, a heart attack. We are attacked under the heart. Yes, now it. that's and it's deliberate. The psychic attacks. This the priesthood. Now, when um, when mother gives a body or builds the soul of man's temple, soul of man's Solomon's temple, soul of man's temple. Mm -hmm. Now you see in chapter one where you see the soul takes on a body of flesh. So now you come through the holy gate of the womb of mother. You can understand why the priesthood in all of your so-called religions suppress women. They're attacking divinity. Now that's not for women to take a misgiving to think that just because they're mother, that they are absent of responsibility if you get the point i mean that's not to play the victim game but that they actually have a responsibility to humanity and so when women don't know themselves and they follow the idol god systems created by the priesthood you can understand again what's wrong in some aspects of society where they're bringing people bodies here sick not knowing that they're out of harmony that's why it's also important for women to go back to the ancient customs and traditions of ancient Africa because you will learn the cosmological functions of the womb in harmony with divine nature and thus the truth of family planning.
distinguished from Margaret Sanger and the Gates family and the genocide operations and uh, how do you say uh, abortions and killing babies and bringing people here sick and feeding children to people through the burger joints so that they can read so that they can reduce their karmic debt by saying as the people begin to find out the, the demonology in the priesthood so they can say you've been eating your own baby so therefore you're just as guilty i want you to know that's why they've been not telling people that they've been feeding them their own children through the burger joints but i'm telling you the motives as to why that's going on and been going on for quite a while so when you got hamburger they telling you hamburger understand it ain't ham it's some children's left cheeks and then some this is after they steal the organs and been selling them with their uh, pathological institutions called hospice hospital hospice hospice hospital yeah industry selling organs this is your priesthood and your politicians in other words they've made a business out of genociding humanity and selling bodies and that's the truth so the human resources have actually been what what they refer to in the political realm by the priesthood chattel what is chattel chattel is french for cattle therefore humanity has been actually used as cattle by the very priesthood and the politicians that you thought or were trained to think were operating in your interest when they're actually they are what what do you call people who eat people what do you call eat people who eat people cannibals oh yes so you didn't know that the priesthood were cannibals and vampires including drinking the blood of children and eating the bodies of Christ. You know the ritual that the Romans, the hybrids do? They, they'll have crackers. It's an interesting cracker. <laughs> anyway, they say this is the body of Christ and this is the blood. Well, guess how real that has been? And you just thought it was a ritual. And they've been killing Christ for a long time. Now, your deal is the master monad and what bring christ out of the tomb and show that christ lives but it lives in you it is the activation of the higher chakras because as they activate these values that you have placed on the institutions that was created by the priesthood and the politicians will have no value to you whatsoever but then you will know the jewels that are actually beneath your feet all the time that you may have been ignoring because you believed in uh, the hegemony systems of the hybrids of Rome who have been pretending to be Jews and are not. That's what that's all about in your Bible. John 8, 44. Thank you very much. Are there any questions, Dr. Nye? Um, I'm just trying to respond to someone's let me go back and uh, let's just see. I know someone did ask a question. What if someone is not able to rise? I they are. <laughs> see, this is what. All right, let's answer the question. Ask the question. So no, that go. was the question. Um, there is no such thing as not able to. These are two things. Will. Write that down and study it. Whosoever will, let them come. Whosoever will, let them hear. So. It is not an issue of not being able. It may be an issue of not being willing. So now you have what will be, is taking place. It's called the separation of the wheat from the chaff. So that means those who choose not to evolve into the higher planes of life will have their will and their wish to continue in the lower planes of life, however, they will be moved, removed from this particular planet, which is being cleaned or purged or baptized. You can use all those terms that you want to. And we ain't talking spooky either. Okay. Um, 
uh, Beauty for One says, what can we do to become more motivated and inspired? Um, I would say this, and I've said this to many people as a tool, and it's not limited to this. So understand that I'm suggesting this to help people along the way. To help people along the way to understand or have a concept into what is known as more science or ancient Chaldean, Sumerian, Egyptian, Eritrean, Mesopotamia, Nubian, Sudanese customs, culture, the Saba, Saba, etc. All of that's connected. Um, for a quick step for most of you will be the Kybalion because it will give you a short synopsis of the culture. And that Kybalion is K-Y-B-A-L-I-O-N. And uh, uh, um, in conjunction with that, so that uh, many of you who um, may not comprehend that where you hear the, the term herm, hermetic law or Hermes Trismegistus or the hermetic principles, the seven principles, uh, also uh, thought, that's T-H-O-T-H -H of ancient Egypt. Understand that Hermes and thought are the same thing or Tahudi, thought, Tahudi is the same thing. And this is another way that the priesthood has hidden African culture or by promoting certain names and not the others nor telling the people of the connection so when you're talking afrocentricity and you're talking to tohuti etc gawiti deity hermes you're saying the same thing thank you very much okay here's another question um Ryan Campbell says, Taj, lately people have been saying that they can hear nature talking to them. Because they're raised, their ch chakras are activating. What it is. So we're coming more into the time of, of You're coming more. Avatar. You need to be aware of that. That's what's going on. Okay. See, it, and this is the deal. The more you know about your ancient African Asian culture, you would know these things. And this is back to the point. The Bible, the Quran, the Waspi, the Vedas, Bhagavad Gita, etc., in general, as a general whole. The, the holy books have been misrepresented to the general masses. That's all I'm saying. And therefore, their concepts of looking at some of these things as literal, when they should have been looking at them cosmologically, logically created false concepts where the priesthood were able to take advantage of the people, you know? Um, and then also some of it misrepresented like the, the horns of the cow or the goat's head, et cetera, being misrepresented as negative when they represent uh, the moon and Venus. Just like you see in the Bible where the woman's standing with the moon over her head, and then you all see her standing on the moon, crescent, et cetera. This is really the fertility principle of the moon. The activation of the relationship of the moon dealing at the basis of the economics of Earth, the ecosystem, the growth of plants that feed Earth, the order cultural principles of religion. Let me give you an example. Sometimes, unfortunately, I do forget mm -hmm. to what are these plants in here. Some of them have died. But there's the one I'm looking at behind you to the right, for example. Mm -hmm. That one. Yeah, photos. I left that because I know you have one that's going crazy. Mm -hmm. But I had I left that in the other day and I saw it and it had begun to just wither. I I went and got the um got it some water and, and apologized mm -hmm. and, and poured the water into it. As I poured the water up top, the plant started to like Mm -hmm. move like thank you mm -hmm. thank you yes thank you so much for re remembering that i'm here yes. and i mean i didn't touch the leaves but the leaves begin you to shift. It. yeah it began to, to to vibrate with like the thanks of the nourishment you know what i do when i go to the to the to restroom to one of the restrooms at the house i always count the new leaves coming out of my posters 
What had happened um, actually a few months back, accidentally, when I was cleaning, I knocked the plant over and it busted the, 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 I had it in a ceramic vase, this old, old ceramic vase, which I liked. And uh, it shocked the plant. And and then plus one day, uh, a couple of days, as because I was traveling and I left the window open and it shocked the plant and a lot of them died. So when I came back again, like so sort of like you said, because I talked to them. And um I in in my way apologized and start watering her and putting dirt back in her, and she started budding back, right? My plant that went all over the place. So she went down to a third, right? And I already know I could bring her back, you know, but the deal, and every time I go home, every time I go to that particular restaurant, um, I count the new leaves, count the new leaves. I mean, it's just what I do. And she gives you more. Yes. <laughs> yes. And it's just, just so beautiful, but you already know we're, we're partners. Right. But uh, in relationship to what we're talking about, People need to know, and I'm not disrespecting people, and I'm not telling the people, let's get this straight, that the mutated cold viruses used as a weapon against the people in this war pandemic, which is a war against the people by your politicians, not from China, from your politicians. They're not your politicians. It's a priesthood. Um... You know why they got you wearing a mask? Let's just lose this. Oh, let's talk about this. Number one, you're in the Aquarian energy, and the chakras are by nature starting to activate. They want to kill Christ. They want to kill the enlightenment, the light in your DNA, the light in your organs, the light that is necessary for the activation of the monad. So how do you do that? You reduce the oxygen because the organs of the body needs oxygen to stay healthy. So if they mask you, you're breathing in carbon monoxide every time you take a breath with these masks. And there, it's no different than people jogging while walking every day, not knowing that they're dimming the light. Now, let me put places to you. The hybrids pretending to be government have told the people that the Chinese initiated this virus that they mutated at Fort Detrick, Maryland, with at least five strains that they admit to, um, that the Chinese did this to the planet. Well, they can say that. Now, uh, approximately over 6,000 miles away, 6,000 six miles away. And it didn't, this release of this virus in these markets that have been operating for over 1,000 years. Never had a problem. All of a sudden, some U.S. corporation operatives go over there in so-called international communications, and all of a sudden, this virus show up. Now, this um, uh, new, uh, 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 um, Yuhan uh, has to shut down. Wuhan. Yeah. Uh, but they're not telling the people that the hybrids from Britain, in the U.S. and France, etc., have been stealing and using Chinese gold since 1954 to run their economies. And subsequent activities that have been taking place over the years has been by default that China has been using the defaulted treasury bonds that they have in their treasury that they've been supporting the U.S. corporation economy since 1954, that they've been using it to acquire control over properties in Manhattan, New York and other economic centers and many of your manufacturing businesses operating at North America have been over the years, last 30 years or so by the uh, politician priesthood who you thought represent you were moving 
companies out of the United States, you moving jobs out of the United States jurisdiction. We're talking the real politics here. And so people who think that China is doing things to them need to look at the whole picture. The other picture is this. Let's talk about distance. So if China is 6,000 miles away and they, Yuan is, is back open again and they've got all this stuff under control and all of the nations around them are just falling absolutely apart. Distinct, we're not talking about the virus. We're talking about they're blaming the virus when it's really the, 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 the credit windows of the world and the trade windows of the world have frozen up and no one's looking at that. They're looking at the virus. Distraction. Distraction. The credit windows of the world and the trade windows of the world have frozen. All right. So now they're telling the people that the virus did do this to them and the Chinese did to it. I say it's the dark priesthood that you've trusted, including your fake. Not they ain't yours. They never been yours. They've been board of directors of United States Trading Company Corporation registered in Austria operating under the secret treaty of Verona against the people and waging war against the people and blaming others for it. Hold on. So if China is 6,000 miles away and this virus can jump across the water, the oceans, and all of a sudden it and blew up the schoolyards and taking the hoops down and everything. Uh, so this is the question for you. This is not a um, statement. This is a question for you. If that virus jumped 6,000 miles across the water and all of a sudden messed up everything here, what good is six feet going to do you? That's just something for you to think about. <laughs> just something to think about. Just, just presenting divine common sense. Furthermore, they tell you your children need not wear the mask. Oh, duh. Oh, so now viruses say, oh, that's a child. I won't give them a cold. But it depends because they're now vacillating back and forth between, oh, yeah, it is affecting children. And I, I oh, remember please. they had a nine-year-old melanated child in the Florida territory, I believe it was, who they took to the hospital. She was having some issues. And then they gave her something. They brought her home. She died. They said it was. Now, let's look at this. Let's, look, this. let's look at this honestly. Let's look, look at this. Yes, she was. Let's look at this honestly. Doesn't it indicate that the persons in any of these organizations that they have been given credit to so-called tell you what to do health-wise were telling the people in the first place that it didn't affect children, that at the first in that first instance that they're insulting your intelligence, and that if the if the virus is what they said it is. You having your children without mask or exposed is helping them kill your children. That's number one. Because virus don't make distinction on age. Germs don't jump off of things based on age. The fact that you buying into it is also indicative that we've been irresponsible to ourselves and trusting these people who are not trustworthy and not worthy to rule. Matter of fact, most of them are not worthy to breathe. However, I know that you're not going to take responsibility and unseat them. How so nature is doing it. Mother nature is taking care of it. She's going to start purging. There we go. One of the things, though, with what many of you don't understand with regard to these foreign countries where a lot of these the businesses that were on this soil have gone to, the people that are in China that are running these are not Chinese nat national nationals, they come from here. They, they exactly they they're not here, they come from the United States Corporation, Corporation Company and, and other hybrid European jurisdictions. Absolutely, they're and they have the been nationals. running the businesses that they moved out of North America and controlling the economy, not unlike what happened just before the Second World War. The same people. The same dark priesthood Satanists. The difference being, though, the difference being between what happened then and what's happening now is that we are moving out of that energy. You know, that, that's the point. That's why this is different. That, that's the this point. This is why the outcome 
should be, could be, must be different. That's why they're doing more things to the people because they're desperately trying to maintain power when Mother Nature is now removing them by activating the higher chakras because they thought they had killed Christ and discovering that he lives, she lives, we live, Diana lives. Mm -hmm. You get the point? And there's a duality to it. Hermetic law, mother, father, Elohim. What you've been told is not uh, valid because when you start examining these things, you're going to find out none of this is what you thought it was. However, their capacity to continue to control the narrative to keep humanity asleep while they rape humanity is being interrupted, not just because the people are waking up, but because nature herself is intervening, or you can call it divine source. All universal law. Some people say Allah. I say all universal law. Go ahead. Kareem, Kareem Bay said that you were had started to say something about the ring in the ears, but you veered from that. Oh, no, even that is part of the activation of chakras. Oh, yeah. <laughs> See, so a lot of things that so people are experiencing, including visit, vivid dreams etc that's making them uncomfortable a lot of people are starting to astral travel unintentionally and discovering these things and of course uh when they start expressing them as we're evolving it gets so uncomfortable with people around them and then some of you as i talked about earlier are jumpers who have been aware of this anyway and I uh, and been silent and been silent because you didn't want to necessarily um you don't like the discomfort of how people that you're close to respond to you because they think you're out the damn lunch, which is kind of comprehensible. Uh, and then uh, the fact that um, you may show signs of disconnecting from some of the material values uh, and away from concepts of expectations put upon you and you find yourself living artificial to get along with the people around you well, let's understand and comprehend that that's going to be happening to more people at a faster rate. And for those who don't recognize it or move with it may be uncomfortably disheveled. So rather than be disheveled and how do you say, let the falling apart of things become chaotic. Let us have some comprehension and understanding of what's going on so that we can help uh, Mother Earth cleanse herself. Uh, willingly and learn more about our higher selves and start what conquering the great belief lower selves and not thinking that we're losing anything um okay i'm not sure what this person says what this is response to it says that's why the democrats are trying to get back in office i'm not sure if they think that's, that's why the ku klux klan who are the grand protectors of the constantin hey. creed loosely referred to as the grand protectors of the christian creed which is a misrepresentation because they're really not christians they're constantinians which set up after belford of uh, the um democratic party to over help overthrow the republic as established in honor honesty confederation law that was adopted from the honor honesty moors uh to establish the constitution for the United States to do business at the Maghreb, etc. Their job was to overthrow it. This is the operations of the circle church and the chancery of the priesthood operating from Fleet Street, England, under the secret treaty of Verona, answering to the Bishopric of Rome and the Excature's Chamber, i.e., sometimes known as the U.S. Treasury, uh, and answering to the Pope of Rome and all of that platform falling apart, that's what's going on now. That's a fact. This, this, this is what's happening. <laughs> Massive squad, squad Squad says, what type of notice will Moors use when the hybrids come knocking at your door to oppose the vaccine shot and the mass control, my good brethren? Now, do you have the solution? No, you have the solution. 
by one being yourself and acknowledging, i.e., that these operatives are not Americans. Stop calling them that. And stop calling them the Republic government because they are not, they are demos, the democ democracy platform of the what? Coup operations that took place after they murdered Lincoln. They set up a false foundation operation called the U.S. Democracy with the Organic Act of Congress, 1871. So what authority do these foreign, alien, and hostile operators pretending to be the United States Republic government operating with authority that's not vested in them and continuing their genocide operations of Margaret Sanger, et cetera, under the guise of shooting what vaccines and who? In U.S. subjects, you're not a U.S. subject. So now you're talking about constitution enforcement of the treaties, aren't you? You're also talking about nationalization. Well, that's what it is. Isn't that what is nationalization is for? To distinguish the jurisdictions, the political jurisdictions. So you're in enforcing the constitution, you're enforcing article two, article three, pardon me, article three, section two, and the supremacy clause, article six, i.e. the treaties to which they are obligated that were in place prior and before the adoption of that constitution. So when you say an enforce the constitution, you're talking about enforcing the treaties. There's your remedies. And since when our people have been forcing the treaties? No, they've been trying to be 14th Amendment, haven't they been? And they've been found behind the priesthood who have been assigned to them as leaders who are usually members of Boule and 32 degree Masons pretending to be legitimately helping the people, marching you around the place, making fools of yourselves when you should have been enforcing the treaties. Goddess One says, I was told if I nationalize, I would be put on a terrorist list. Is that true? Why do some conscious people- They told to you that, so therefore people? someone's intimidating you, aren't they? The treaties exist before the adoption of that constitution, and that constitution comes from Honor Honesty Confederation, which is Muslim law, which Obama told you about, didn't he? So now, if somebody tells you don't enforce the Constitution and treaty, they lie to you, but if you willingly follow it, you give up your birthright. You have that right. It's so whoever will. So now you want to serve Rome, but what you're not going to do is serve two masters. I'll tell you that. You make up your mind what you want to do. Remember when people say they can't, is it a matter of can't or they will or will not? So it's called consent, isn't it? You can, incent to, you can consent to your enslavement or you can study and recognize that they have obligations. So let's look at this. All contracts and engagements entered into before the adoption of the Constitution. I want to show you something in nationality and birthrights taken away from the Moors as an example. And one of the reasons why I did this this book years ago 25 or more years ago from notes <laughs> yeah now hold on from the beginning introduction now, um, the foundation of the church and state connection, the Inquisition, uh, and the, the Black Codes, known as the Black Codes, or the connotative, the enslavement of the Moors, labeled as Negroes, Blacks, colored, Latinos, etc., as described in this lesson book, is based on fact and on research. Now, the civic lesson book is not being presented to attack anyone, anyone's beliefs, or their areas of mental security. Because remember, the mental security is not the fact of security, right? which means beliefs are not facts, right? And so the text serves the purpose of exposing true knowledge in history.
to my people, i.e. the Moors, who have been deceived by those who have and are presently abusing, misteaching, and misdirecting them due to their lack of knowledge. Truth needs no apology. And law is issued from the birthright. Law is issued from the birthright. So now the birthright must be reclaimed. This is why no Duali said, if you don't do anything else, declare your nationality. Now you're dealing with the universal principle of demonstrating why treaties and constitutions even exist in the first place. So constitutions are constructed and governments are erected in government to govern the persons being governed by virtue of them recognizing their sovereignty being by agreement relegated to some degree to a body of chosen people by plebiscite to rule, pardon me, conditionally their affairs of their estates. And when such position is breached, that office no longer exists to the person, but all the sovereignty, which is by right divine, reverts back to the people. Now, when it comes to diversity of citizenship, now you're making distinctions. So now you have enforcement of treaty. Therefore, Article 6 of the Constitution for the United States said all debts and contracts entered into before the adoption of this Constitution shall be valid against the United States as under this Constitution as under the Confederation. Therefore, those valid contracts are the treaties. There you go. So the question Have they been enforcing it? Well, the question is, shouldn't we have a government well, in didn't, place enforcing the treaty for All us? right. Did, was it not in place and was it not secretly overthrown with the coup d'etat over Lincoln so that they would not have obligation to the treaties that already exist as a supreme law of the land that nobody talks about? Keep in mind, this Constitution and the Confederation and all treaties made or which shall be made under the authority of the United States shall be the supreme law of the land and the judges of every state shall be bound thereby. Have you not read those instruments? Why did you always say enforce declare your nationality? Because without that, you have no claim because you're not a party to that. Why do you think they created the brand system and getting our people to agree to be Negro, black, colored, and Indian? Because none of them Entities have anything to do with the establishment of organized government on the planet Earth, nor any treaties that supersede that constitution that binds them to their obligations to the treaty. Now, Anna von Ritzinger, whatever her name, claimed, she was helping, the but, she, but she also said, I, I read this, where um, the only ones that could change this were. Uh, basically, European men of that were over the age of 21 because, because even the women aren't a part of that Treaty of Verona. Right. You see, this is why you got to go back to basics. So, what are they obligated to? The treaties. Why do you think nobody talks about the treaties? Why? Because the super. It is the see. This is what got to re, you got to remember. It's the supreme law of the land. People keep talking the Constitution but they don't talk about the constitution is their obligation to the treaty enforcement. You got to put it in context. That's why Duali said, go back to the state of mind of your ancient mothers and fathers. Why? You would find these things to be true. So the people are, are arguing about the Europeans not honoring the constitution and treaty when they haven't been honoring the constitution and treaty, starting with claim to be Negro, black and colored which took them off the platform. They know they're not Negro, Black, and colored, but they agreed because some hybrid European occupying their land told them that. They know damn better that the human beings aren't crayons and colors. So the Moorish American nation of Morocco said, isn't a term American considered a misnomer since it talks about the copper colored people? It's, isn't American al Moroccan? It's simply a dialectical corruption. Al, Al Moroccan. Al Moroccan, American. I'm proud Al Moroccan, descendants of Moroccans, and born on the land of my forefathers. In the English form, mm -hmm. it's called American. So, is the hybrid 
alien Europeans who have been occupying the Maghreb under the Spanish Inquisition operations and colonialism, are they the Americans? No, we are. Get over it. See, the deal is when you start looking at these things leg legitimately and understand dialectical modifications and alterations and the transmutation and translations of linguistic form and morphology into other linguistic forms, you can trace families of words. So the hybrid, and I say this because even the hybrid operators of, of, of Europe aren't the Aboriginal people of Europe. So now you want to talk about St. Patrick's Day where they were running the Moors out of Ireland, England, and Germany, and stealing that land and stealing parts of the history that is actually African history and culture? Oh, come on. You know, and anyone and all scholars know that all your major universities in Europe were what? Designed, erected, and established by Moors. That's a fact. Do some research. So now, if you don't claim your pedigree, you you yourself are stepping off the platform of civilization. Why do you think? Use your intelligence. What is the advantage of the hybrid Europeans creating what is known as the branding system? And we're not just talking about hot irons, you know, burning brands on people. We're talking about claiming people to be who they're not changing the names of the geography and the people of the land and then convincing the people to agree and go along with these things now for those of you who are so-called african scholars etc and keep on trying to justify why this black thing talk let's set for the record show on the record of civilization where the nation of black adonia created anything Show on the record where the so-called nation of Negro Dina created anything. Doesn't exist, nor does such people exist. Those are misnomers. Those are war names, also known as nom de guerre. And so therefore, the persons that are called Negro and Black are really the indigenous people and sometimes called Indian. So the Indian and the so-called Negro designation are really referencing the Moors who are the ancient Canaanite, Moabite, Chaldean, Sumerian descendant people that occupy the western parts of the planet of Africa known as the Maghreb, i.e. Morocco, the most extreme west. And therefore the sun neither rises nor sets on the Moroccan empire because it includes the globe of the world and the provinces which later become what you call as the nation states in contemporary time. And so most of the so-called nation states that the people acknowledge today didn't exist 200 years ago. That's a fact, do some research. Next question. Um. <clears throat> Would treaty enforcement, um, Rain says, would treaty enforcement still matter even if your mind's eye is not fully activated? I don't know if they See, this is what matters because now you're bringing up what it does. It kills the false platform. Keep in mind, ultimately, ultimately, all of this is an exercise for you because when you, once you come to that point of starting to enforce it, you're going to go far beyond that. However, the exercise is necessary for your mind, the experience. But once you achieve it, you ain't gonna ride that bike. You're going far beyond it. However, it's necessary for your experience. Really, to be honest with you. Uh, Marvin May says, can we just start using the word more? It's not the word, it's the pedigree. I, 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 See, you, you have been sort called call the word, but let's look at this word. Look at it this way. People need to comprehend that Negro, black and colored are terms and are created in a caste system. More is short for Moroccan, which is really ancient Chaldean, Canaanite, Moabite, Nubian, Sudanese, Eritrean, Mesopotamia, collectively, people of Asiatic African descent, 
and more is the common name of that bloodline pedigree and consanguinity of African Asian people collectively and particularly designated for the people of the Western Hem Hemisphere who have been denationalized under the Spanish Inquisition in order for the hybrid Europeans to reconstruct history and anthropology and geography, which is what we've all been suffering from. And therefore the lack of concept and the lack of consciousness of knowledge of self and of estates and birthright. Now back to Anna von Reese, who were assisting, who was assisting Pope Francis. Remember when Pope Francis, um, who is the who is the head for the God of this world, i.e., the hybrid Romans, etc., um, brought uh, both <laughs> political leaders and so-called religious leaders together, and promised that they were ceasing the current continuous activities known as the doctrine of discovery that most of our people don't even didn't even know was still active which indicates their lack of study their lack of reading their lack of understanding the politics so anna von reese who's really in Habsburg, so you, you got to kind of look at her motives too although uh, now understand that uh the world stopped buying u.s treasury bonds that were set up since the the uh, mercenary commercial mercenary war of the 1860s which you, you are told in history books in reconstructed history books they call it the civil war but it's not the civil war they have the hybrid europeans fighting against the aboriginal people then you have some aboriginal people who've been helping different factions of britain fight france and spain etc mm -hmm. with this is where your convolution of all those treaties come from um and then you have the process where as the different areas of the Moorish Empire, as they fell, and as some were maintaining powers, etc., you have the series of different treaties that evolved between the Moroccan Empire and Great Britain and the correspondences, including, so we mention a lot uh, of the mother treaty that we refer to, uh, of the world called the Treaty of Peace and Friendship in general that Obama also mentioned, that Rahm Emanuel also mentioned, um, that the world also mentioned in the rights of indigenous people in its nature and the obligations of the nations, nations of the world, etc. And then you have all these subsequent treaties like the uh, um, um, Camp Home Treaties, J Treaty, Treaty of Ghent, etc., Act of Algiers, all of these things are really related. Um, and so people who don't understand, but need to be made aware that the Moorish Empire covered the globe, not just one area. And so you have these different treaties that were made at different period of time as the Moorish Empire was falling and the powers were falling and the trade routes were falling into the hand of the hybrid Germanic tribes, etc., which is really what's going on, what has become known as the United States Trading Company, which is why they operate jurisdictionally around the world, although the appearance is, is that they're separate political jurisdictions. That's for the public to think. They are one jurisdiction. And that's the why the, the, the around the world, different countries would shut down because they're- By, by their say so. Right, because- In other words, when you, when the United States kept, when the United States sneezes, corporate, allegorically, all of those so-called Western nations or the Occidental nations catch a cold. Yeah. So when the United States says COVID, everybody got to put a damn mask on. Right. And then they're showing also yeah. the expanse of, of, of what their control, so-called government. Now we're seeing that it encompasses their so-called entertainment, the so-called news media. They were the, to keep the, the masses the so -called what? Medical, preoccupied there you go. They're and all under a them. spell while they get raped. Right. And then project the injury on, here you go, all right, put it this way. Uh, some persons who claim in to have all your jewels in their possession, your estates, calls, um, talks to any politician 
local or federal, et cetera, and tell them to attack you because you're getting a little bit too, your pants are getting a little bit big. And so all of a sudden, the internal revenue service agents, i.e. inquisition revenue service, want to audit you and start stealing your accounts and et cetera that were never your accounts anyway, but that you thought they were. And you have no idea that it's coming from the politicians that are being authorized by somebody behind them that's claiming to control all your jewels in your estate. And that's how it's been running. And that these people have been going in and out of different jurisdictions around the world, not needing a passport for shipping, but you do. And you haven't figured out yet why that has been going on, that the jurisdictional lines that have been projected to the public, that the persons in government don't run by those rules that they put on you because these jurisdictional lines are for your uh, mental containment, let's put it that way, but do not operate with them, meaning that they don't respect that that rules is for you. And the people don't know that, that these people fly in and out all around the world from Russia to China to Bosnassel stand and every other stand that you can put together without a passport. Because the jurisdictional lines are artificial. That's what I'm saying to you. Yeah. Once you understand how they're operating, you start coming out of that smoke screen, don't you? And once you start losing faith in their legitimacy, their fiat loses its power which is the issue of why you're exercising consciousness. Because they only have power because you give it to them. See, the people's concept has evolved to the point that they think that these people have power and authority because it just exists with them. No, it exists with them because you keep consenting to it. But you think that you're not. Therefore, you make no effort to rescind that a state of yours, do you? Because you think you're convinced that they are your authority, i.e., pardon me, your God. Next question. Um, what is a way to express Chris to Christianize clan family members that these institutions are not the rulers that the pastors, preachers, taught them to respect rather than the higher self. All right, now here you go. For for those to, to bring it down to earth for the average person, um, so write this down, you all. I want you to go into your older dictionaries and then I want you to do this research. Look up Constantine, the father of alleged Christianity, which he is not. Because now you're talking about Copti or Coptic Christianity which is really Hikupta or Egyptian, which has nothing to do with what you've been told Christianity is that you're getting these days. Uh, so write this down. Nicene Creed is a short term or phrase used for Constantine's Creed, also known as the Niceno hyphen Constantinopolitan Creed which is really what has been promoted among your family under the guise of Christianity. I repeat, what the world has been given and getting in the name of Christianity is the Niceno hyphen Constantinopolitan Creed, which is the official name of the Constantine modification, alteration, and corruption of the Egyptian African culture known as Copti Christianity, which is really the original your stuff, distinguished from what you think you got as Christianity. In other words, you got a placebo. So your family members have really been worshiping Constantine hiding behind the name of Jesus as trained like they do any other animal. And they've been convinced that they've been told the truth. However, 
let's do the research you not me you do the research and then you'll clear up your own thoughts so once if you want to help your family members go do some research on a nicene creed a niceno constantinopolitan creed and give them the document let them read it and let them discover that they've really not been worshiping the Moabite that okay. you call Jesus. How about the Christian black codes? They, including that, that comes out of the Spanish Inquisition <laughs> and codes noir of the Franciscan Brotherhood of 1620. And the bulls that enslave you coming directly from the church. And we're not talking about the original circle of the womb, which is what the word church means. It's coming from the hybrid Romans under the Spanish Inquisition, perpetrated as Christianity when it's really Constantine worship, which is really the reason why most of your so-called so-called religious leaders and particularly your bishopric and pastors and reverends of the alleged Christian church will never tell the official name to the masses to their congregations. Why? Because once the people start studying, they thought they were worshiping Jesus, i.e., which is a metaphor, discovering that they really been worshiping Constantine. That's why they will never tell in the churches the official name of Christianity as taught to them which is the Niceno Constantinopolitan Creed. Now, if your people keep on pretending to be holier than thou under that banner, they're agreeing to what is provably misrepresentation. That's how you help your family, by doing research and showing the truth, because they because it ain't coming from you, it's coming from the church's own record. How about that? So all masks are off. So now, rather than wait for the mask to come off, why don't you pull some of the mask off of these phonies, starting with ourselves? Because it ain't like we ain't been hypocrites, because we, as a body of people, have been extreme hypocrites. Okay, here's a question. Sudan means land of the blacks, right? The if black, not, what does it mean? Say it again. What means it? Sudan, Sudan means land of the blacks, All right. right? If not, what does it mean? All right, so... Uh, land of Sudanese, that's what it means. Land of Nubia. So let's look at the Germanic word black. Black derived from Middle English. So black is Middle English derived from Old High German, black, black, blank, etc. means pale colors and white spot. So now, how does that mean Sudanese? We're talking etymology. So now, see, if you're going to, if we're going to be making statements, we should know how to read, right? So go to your dictionary, go to the etymology of a dictionary and look up the word black. It means white spot and pale colors. Now tell me, where does that mean Sudanese or Nubia? Hmm. Well, there you go. The, the, so the issue comes behind that. Can you read now you can understand why the hybrid Europeans make fun of people of African descent who have been defeated by them and say, don't worry about them picks. That's P-I-C-T-S-I-E. And for the children, they call them pickaninnies. Don't worry about them little pickaninnies. They will never compete because they can't read. That's what they're saying to you. Yeah. Marvin Mays, would you please repeat your question if you're you keep asking us the a response and i can't find your original question so you need to write it out again so uh, i'm just making that i'm just making that um statements that have been made in contemporary times for social control should not be given a, a, a validity of ancient research that's what i'm saying to you meaning that we need not discuss at this time whether or not uh george washington had an iphone or samsung that's point that i'm making uh, so when things are taken out of context which black are, is taken out of context which is a tag that's been put on the moors as if it has ancient origin in reference to the people and it doesn't it's contemporary social control 
So Amore All Gamble L says, how do we proclaim our nationality and get married without being under their de facto corporation? All right. So now we know, just do the search, research on the marriage, the marriage certificate, which is actually a bond and a bank bond and a claim on your estate. And it comes from the Vatican or the church, et cetera, where they're claiming the body and the womb and the eggs of the womb, as well as all issues from the womb. It has nothing to do with anything holy or divine, et cetera. And the truth of the matter is prior to those operations of the hybrid Romans, you're dealing with matrimony. That's number one. So when marriage is a corruption, matrimony is the truth. So go back to the state of mind of your ancient mothers and fathers and start acting like you know and get out of the false jurisdiction that they keep tricking you into going into. This stuff is researchable for anybody. So, I mean, you know, if our people would just read and if the so-called fake leaders who are signed by the corporate state would stop lying to them, marching them around on their own land, making fools of the damn selves, maybe we can make some progress. So, let me go back. Uh, somebody keeps reading stuff, printing stuff from the slaves. Okay. The daughters of Yahushua Messiah says is Kamala Harris eligible to run for the president or VP according to the Constitution based on article of Newsweek by Dr. John Eastman? Let, is he correct in his thesis? It depends. Thank you, Grandmaster. That's uh, a qualification. Yeah. Now, so now are you talking about the legitimate republic? United States or the de facto platform that was created after 1861, which is a, which is essentially and factually a private trading human trafficking corporation. Now, under the legitimate constitution for the United States, black being a tag and a designation for a what you call a subjugated or enslaved more. A black cannot hold any office of any legitimate government because a, a black is a designation for property, human chattel, not dealing with any complexion, but dealing with status. Now, relative to the de facto operation, anyone can be president of that corporation if the Pope of Rome said that they can or any of the ruling families say that they can. This is also why Obama was assigned to the CEO position. Although he said publicly that he's not black and he said publicly it's a dead status. He's Kenyan. See, we got to put things in context. I think if when people start looking at the facts of status and the facts of history, they will get out of the emotion of the fake race platform phenotype arguments set up by Carlos Linnaeus and other hybrid dramatic operators and adopted by the uh, board of directors of the United States Service Corporation company operating at North America on the land dealing with civil judicial powers under false pretenses pretended to the world as a nation state, which it is not. It's a human trafficking trading corporation company registered in Austria and operating under the secret treaty of Verona, i.e. the United States is not a country, it's a private corporation, which you will also see that Anna von Ries in support and help and service to the Pope of Rome, who owns that Roman Curia venue, says publicly, and it's documented for anyone to see. So for those of you who are listening who really don't understand this, go look up the letter directly from Pope Francis, to Barack H. Obama, 2014, and it's titled Civil Orders, and it's available to anyone on the internet. Read it for yourselves and become erudite in your comprehension and educate yourself proper to the civil operations that's going on on this planet. And while you're at it, pay attention to about the four different spellings of the United States and then put dates to them and you'll learn even more question that Marvin Mays is asking. <laughs> What's the 
do we have to join a group or can we start using more? That's your that's your birthright. It's not a group or a club. It's back to understanding pedigree. And this is also one of the frauds that have been perpetrated in the name of the Morris Science Temple of America or any other organized group any perpetration that more is a club operation it is the pedigree of these people known falsely under the nom de gear such as negro black colored Indian, etc latino all of those are nom de gear more is the pedigree bloodline also filipino and stuff like that they're all mortals that's a fact and you have a lot of Filipinos now starting to publicly say that because they're getting tired of the BSK dwarf too. Tired. You, have, you have people from all these jurisdictions that are starting to tell you, since your so-called black leaders won't tell the truth, you have people from other jurisdictions now publicly making videos telling you that you're more. Todd, I visited MS. MS um, TFA mm -hmm. and was told that the Moroccan Empire and the Moorish Empire is different. Is this true? You do some research and answer that question yourself. Empire tells you it all. Now, so if somebody saying hold, on, hold, on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Let's 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 solve this problem easily. Okay. Let's solve this problem easily. There's your there's your Holy Quran of the Moorish Science Temple of America. So I'm not going to argue that they're lying to you. I'll read from what they're claiming, their foundation. So let them call the proper liar. All right. So um, okay. this is, um, there you go. There you go. You see that? <laughs> All right. So we're doing chapter 47. Now tell me what you're hearing here. <clears throat> Excuse me, let, let me clear my throat. <laughs> <laughs> now, chapter 47, Egypt, 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 the capital dominion of the Dominican, a uh, dominion, pardon me, of Africa. Are we clear? The inhabitants of Africa are the descendants of the ancient Canaanites from the land of Canaan. Old man Cush and his family are the first inhabitants of Africa who came from the land of Canaan. His father Ham and his family were second. Then came the word Ethiopia, which means the demarcation line of the dominion of Amexum, the first true and divine name of Africa. The dividing of the land between the father and the son. The dominion of Cush, northeast and southeast Africa, and northwest and southwest was his father's dominion of Africa. In later years, many of the brethren from Asia and the Holy Lands joined them. The Moabites from the land of Moab, who received permission from the pharaohs of Egypt to settle and inhabit Northwest Africa, they were the founders and are the possessors of the present Moroccan empire with their Canaanite, Hittite, and Amorite brethren who sojourned from the land of Canaan seeking new homes. Their dominion and inhabitation extended from Northeast and Southwest Africa across the great Atlantis, even until the present North, South and Central America and also Mexico and the Atlantis Islands before the great earthquake which caused the great Atlantic Ocean. Now tell me who's lying. Now that's the Quran that these people in the MST of A are standing on and they're contradicting 
chapter 47, aren't they? Oh, duh, raw. <laughs> Let me clear my throat. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Next question. <laughs> so when he says, is there any connection or similarities in the Yaqub and Ishmael story and the 12 sons of Jacob in the Bible where the 12 sons were the, where the 12, I think she means were, the 12 sons, actually the 12 women of there the Zodiac. There is a connection. So now you know that when you're studying what is called or classified as Semitic languages, you do not have a J. And so there is no Jacob, it's Yaqub. Mm -hmm. So do I need to say anything more or do you need to start thinking? So all we need, this is why it's important for people to know linguistic form. And a little bit about etymology. I think they better listen more to Brother Abdullah Il Talib Mosi Bey and his dispensation from professorship into etymological instruction to help our people so that we can get out of the emotional response and deal with the facts and do what you call etymological research. And so etymology is, or the etymon degree, is really the true origin of, the true meaning of, the true history of, and the true morphology of words in all linguistic formats. There you go, i.e. learn the rules. And the absence of that is why the hybrid European has boasted that don't worry about them little niggas. They can't compete because they can't damn read. And the ones who can are too damn lazy and won't read because they're scared of books because we told them don't look at nothing but the Quran, the Bible, and the sandwich group. And so they look at a Subway sandwich and they ain't going no further because they're scared of books. It's called Indexus Librorum Prohibitorum, Indexus Librorum Expurgatorius, and it has worked quite well. And in common language, it's called the Great Christian Book Burnings. There you go. Uh, next question. <laughs> next question. Um, no. How, how can we nationalize through the courts? Wrong jurisdiction. If you nationalize, the first thing you know that you're dealing with what is on one level called an argument of diversity. Other issues calling separate political jurisdictions. Other uh, affirmation of that is called treaty law, etc. So, are you a part of the hybrid Europeans political jurisdiction? No, you are not. That's why someone who from uh, Asiatic who are branded black could never be president of their private corporation called the U.S. You need to understand the political jurisdiction. It's not a bias. It's a common sense. You don't play both sides of the chessboard. You need to understand jurisdiction. Someone wanted to know if, uh, if Obama is Irish like his mother. It, 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 is his mother's Irish? Because remember, we're the real Europeans. So if they're really Irish, aren't they Egyptian? Because that was certainly Nefertiti's daughter that founded that whole area. See, I think See, this is why, again, people in I know. In these now, let's talk, let's talk, now, aren't we talking epistemology? And aren't we talking etymology? And aren't we talking true geography? And now, isn't it important for our people to study world? If you want to know Moorish history, study the world. Because the snakes in Ireland were the Moors. That, they're running you out. They Just because they've been killing off the... Go look, go research European history. Europe is not a hybrid European. Europa is a Berber queen. And Berbers are what? Moors that come out of the Red Sea area and populate the earth. And in some stories that's told that the queen Dodo of the king of Tyree established Moroccan kingdom area or Kataj that you call today. And so you have it in what? On, on that side of Africa, and you also have Carthage on this side of Southwest Africa, South America. You need to understand in African culture, they always made sister cities, feminine and masculine. That's the truth. And so even what they called 
Spain is what? Al Andalus and Al Andalusia. And so when they're talking about uh, Northern Africa, in order to disconnect you from the real history, they won't call that whole Northern area Iberia. They'll say Portugal, Spain, and Italy. But those who know the real history will call it what? The Moorish Iberian Peninsula of Africa. Shows you how quickly people forget for lack of research. However, it's the responsibility of these so-called African scholars to tell you the truth. But they've been shutting down your chakras, haven't they? Or blocking the light. You see why so many of these people are upset with Noble Drawley and also those who misrepresent a lot of what he really brought back to these Moors? Why do you think they always say, Drawley didn't teach no civics? Well, birthright and nationality are civic subject matters. So call him a liar if they want to. However, his work proves and stands on its own merit. There you go. Next. Taj, aren't the Samurais or Samurais the first people of Japan that were Moors? So aren't they from Central Africa? Yes, they are. And so you deal with Naga, aren't you? And Twa. That's them from Africa. So Orient, huh? So aren't they Oriental? Come on. All of these are people of the Red Sea, all of them, from China on down. All of us, all of them is Asiatics. Get over it. Stop trying to separate yourselves. Just because the hybrids have been separating you. Acknowledge that we're one extended family. So Get over it. If we are not black based on the etymology, why? No, we're not black because we're Moors. We're I'm just Canaanite and Moabites. Let me finish reading it. If we're not black based on the etymology, why do our so-called leaders continue to use this derogatory word? Example, Black yeah. Lives Matter and foundational black now, Americans. So now you a fraud or a mislead? Well, a you, already know, mislead. you already know upon examination that is both. And so now when you do a little bit more research, now you'll discover that your so-called black leaders, most of them are what? Um, in some Masonic Lodge, and that's not to condemn masonry, don't misunderstand, and are members of Boule, and answer to the hybrid members of Skull and Bones, and they got kickback situations, like 501c3 Skull and Bones agreements, et cetera, so they're not gonna rock the boat. Now, to deny that they're compromised is not honest, isn't it? Um, so answer your own question. But yet all of them have been taken to the mountaintop. That's a that's a Masonic statement of showing or demonstrating being exposed to the order of the Great Seal. That is the eye at the top of the pyramid. It's also referred to in Masonry as Muhammad's Mountain. Isn't it also a, a literal place that they go to get the groom? Oh, yes, 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 yes. yes. And told the truth about things. And then take death oaths not to reveal those secrets to the general masses. Why? Because the institutions that bring them finance would collapse. Why? Because the blind faith or the killing of Christ or the light, killing of the light, dimming of the light is their missionary work in order for them to do what? To vampire all the people. Don't vampires like it in the dark because they do their evil in the dark. Because when you put light on it, they can't hide. That's what the Aquarian lights are doing. It's exposing everything. That's why we say, we've been telling people for the last couple of years, all masks are off. You need to know that that's a spiritual statement. That's not just some, you know, convenient, how do you say, rescue complaint or statement that we've been making. That's an act of nature from divine source that you may call Allah or anything else that you call of the unseen ethereal planes of world of life, the source. All this crap is being exposed now. So as the people see, 
they're trying to block the sun. As the sun comes out, the son of God comes out to expose things. They're trying to assassinate the sun. That's why they're constantly trying to kill Christ. And as you activate the chakras, you will see dimensionally, you'll see through all this stuff. That's why they're assassinating Christ constantly. So Jesus dies over and over again every year. Now, um, and John, also resurrects. John Terrius L says, why is there a problem with Indians and Moors been trying to figure this out? No, you have. Well, yes, let's put it this way. <laughs> Once you understand that the so-called Indian is the Moor, you'll understand is that the fictional names that we've adopted to create divisions amongst us is the confusion. Because when you do the research, you'll find out that they're all Moors. That's the whole point. Get over it. And some of the Moors agreed to go by the designation Indian, thinking that they were getting some sovereignty from the hybrid Europeans. So do research on the Bureau of Indian Affairs, the evolutionary, and also the reservations that they created and got some of the different tribes to agree to be Indian to get a benefit. Some people call them five dollar Indians. And then you got to deal also with not India, because there's no such thing as India, deal with people from Sindh, or what you call Hindustan, uh, and the Naga, who also have been here with us, that also have their original origin from Central Africa, and are pretending, some of them, that they're not Africans. So get over it. The argument is people buying into the artificial constructs that have been erected, to divide the Asiatic African tribes and peoples against themselves. That's where that argument has its origin. Also, may I might I interject with regard to what you were just saying about the Christ and what they're trying to kill. The, the Colossians 127 says, to whom God was pleased to make known what is the riches of the glory of this mystery among the Gentiles, which is Christ in you the hope of glory and so when they begin to explain what this mystery is you know they they talk a little bit about uh it being a right um the rights were called mysteries because they had a secret meaning not known indeed to the world at large or the masses but quite known and intelligible to the privileged body of the initiated now you understand your secret societies now you understand why you see the people who are alleging to be the elite have doing chemtrails with barium, aluminum, and other bacteria and human blood to make the masses sick and to block out the rays of the sun. It's not accidental. You need to know the nature of these people that you think or have been trained to think is quote unquote, and this is wrong, your government, when they are all members of the dark priesthood who have been governing over your estates under de facto platforms. Now go back to the Pope, Pope's letter to Obama and you can see him admitting to that. And also commanding to the members of the Roman Cura to cease and desist their activities. And he refers to them as to what they actually are, and that is what? Commercial mercenary forces. They're not officers of law. They're commercial mercenaries. And just because your so-called leaders told you that they were law officers, understand you've been defrauded. We are actually experiencing the great apoc apocalypse. Which is, falling away from which all is the revealing. We're seeing what was covered up. That's all it means. It, it means the revealing. It means the falling away. Mm -hmm. They said many would fall away from the truth, but it really were falling away from the, the lies. Established institutions. Effective. Now, let's look at this, you all. Now, for those of you who doubt what we're speaking, can you verify for the record that your government structures, not just here at the Maghreb, but around the world, are they stable anymore? I say no. You can say yes, but you would be lying to yourself and to others. I say to you, 
All the economic institutions are collapsing in on themselves around the planet. It's not opinion, it's a fact. The educational platforms around the world are collapsing in on itself, on themselves. The challenge to you is to prove otherwise while intending to tell the truth and go by not your opinion necessarily, but go by the record. And you will see all of the institutions operating on Midgard Earth are in a state of deterioration and collapse. You better get in harmony for the new world and not the order that they've been telling you. But the world under the light, i.e. your DNA memory, which is measure of light, and your Christ, or the activation of the other dimensions that you, some of you forgot existed. And so therefore your value that you have placed in the institutions that have been governing over your lives for these last couple hundred years in particularly are collapsing. And if you cling to them, you're going down with them. But that's your choice. We're just making you aware of what's obvious to even a child, if they pay attention to it, because it's obvious. But you can, the point that we're saying to you, don't fall to your emotions and deny what's actually happening which would cause you to be retarded in your activities for the necessary ascension of the higher degrees of the chakra activities that are taking place by nature of the acquiring entry of light. Distinguished from the Pis Piscean energy of darkness and belief that is dying out. Whether it's bad or not is not my argument. It's the recognition of the new light Okay, I have a couple questions that came in via text. Yes. Um, to says first, um, hold up, this is the same person. <laughs> okay, and he texts me more. All right, come along. First, the Constitution says that the government gets its power from quote unquote the consent of the governed. Can we withdraw our consent? And what is the process? That's one question. Mm -hmm. So let's answer one question at a time. Okay, we'll start. All right. Now, number one, the constitution that's been operating here in trade, in trade law, admiralty and commerce, etc., on our land is derived from Anna Honesty Confederation Moors Law and from the Renapi Moors, etc., at North America. And um from the Nanakook uh, Moors, who also refer to as the Delaware Indians. They're referred to as Delaware, and they're really Nanakook, or Nanakooki. Now, the deal of it is, the Treaty of the United, for the United States wouldn't exist if it wasn't for the treaties that supersede them. Therefore, and it, is, it is an appendage. When those who are held or hold office breach or do any act of misprision of treason, the office is abandoned and it reverts back to the people. So therefore the issue is, are you prepared to activate the pre-existing government that already exists? You ain't gotta reinvent the wheel, you need to get back on it. This is where Drawley say, bringing the people back into the constitutional fold of government. People keep thinking the constitution and not the treaties that supersede it as the supreme law. So your concepts must be right. Your activation into jurisprudence is the rescission of restate from them. Your activity is. That's why Duali said, if you don't do anything else, declare your nationality. Study what that really means and what you're doing is a reversion of your estate. Go ahead. Okay, second. Next question is, what is the official name of the corporation, the United States or Columbia, and where are the original articles of incorporation and where were they originally filed? 
So now you look at you talk about Philadelphia, number one. Philadelphia at, at the Shaka Moxham area that you call Pennsylvania. And of course, when they uh, overthrew the legitimate government, that's when they set up the um, District of Columbia for the Colombian goddess at, at Virgin Mary. And that's, they took a part of the area of Virginia and a part of Maryland, that's Virgin Mary, and gave the birth of what they call the birth of the nation. So it was the birth of the fraud. So that if you understand that, you answer your own question. That's the point that I'm making. And All we call, need yeah, to do is get our people coming to from, think. Yeah, Shamari, who's actually yeah. probably on the that said that they're on the feed. Yeah. So the the uh, the official name was was United States Service Corp Corporation. United States Trading Columbia Company. wasn't in the no. Okay. And remember, was, Columbia is a Roman goddess. Which is when the, they did the coup d'etat against Lincoln, they took this district for their political international operations of military commercial activity. That's what Washington, D.C. is. Right. And this is why they'll have the triple star that you see. You'll see the triple star, and then you'll see two bars. So you got the upper world and the underworld. And then you got the three stars above it. And so that is the Vatican. That is the Circle Church in the Chantry, Westminster, i.e. London, England, and then you have Washington, D.C., the Trinity operations of the Spanish Inquisition that never ended and has been disguised as what? Legitimate government. And the real heirs have been buried and told that they have a coat of many colors, i.e. they be called color people. The Joseph. They are not. <laughs> The, the Joseph story. Yes, what it is, is it's a metaphor telling you what's up. That's why Juwali said what? You are not Negro, Black, or colored people. You need to know, and or Ethiopian, what he's talking about, don't confuse the demarcation line activity or the great super to bear with an identity. Doesn't remove the, because the people are what? Chaldean. Nubian, Sudanese, they're all Moors, Canaanites, Moabites, get over it. That's who you are. The, this is what it is. People have been trained to hate themselves, and so they keep trying to be everything but what they're not, but what they want the benefit of the estate. You, you see, there's a subtleness behind it. They're trying to rationalize the brands that they've adopted from Rome, Negro, Black, color, and Indian. But as soon as you do the research, all these are what? Nom de gear. Doesn't mean they're negative. They're nom de gear. But what is negative is that it removes you from estate. And it, it removes you off the platform of jurisprudence. So all of these so-called Indian brands, brands that are called Indian is, tribes were basically clans of to Moors. promote non-descendancy. But they were Moors. They exactly. were clans, sort of like clans. Of exactly. Moors. All Moors, but just different clans of Moors. Now you understand why the, the brother who was the chieftain for um, uh, Navajo confederations for the Navajo tribes in the West, and he used to call me before he died. And they started declaring their Moorish nationality. And I, I apologize for forgetting the name immediately, but he's the brother actually that did the movie 300. That movie 300, mm -hmm. the star in there, I just talked to him on a regular basis. Mm -hmm. They stopped claiming to be Indian and start claiming their more nationality and start getting rid of all them fake secondary treaties that everybody been talking about, made by different compromised so-called tribal leaders that had no authority to either sell the land or advocate the land to the hybrid Europeans or claim to be Indians and become a part of the Bureau of Indian Affairs and neutralize themselves. Mm -hmm. Yeah. My story, brother, you know, usually every couple of weeks, once in a while, every week, but every couple of weeks, and they stop playing these, these engine games. No, it's not the brother. The brother played in the movie 300. Okay. Matter of fact, they haven't posted. I, I, I apologize because 
because my mind is not there right now. Um, but um, he played in the movie the 300. As a matter of fact, you'll see his picture posted on the on the video um, on the video covers of the of the covers to the videos of the movies. Remember 300? And they talk about the Persians, etc. Well, the Persians is you. You get the point? Yes. This one? Hold on. Yep. Which one? The one in the Hold middle? Hold on. Yep. Yep. The one in the middle? Yep. Excuse me. Okay. In the movie. Yeah. Okay. And he died a couple of years ago. Keep that in mind. Okay. And I'll when I think of his name, I'll tell you. But that's not so important because people can research it anyway. Hold that up so but the deal the point that hold yes it up, hold it up so they can see it yeah. but the point that i'm saying to you uh he's also the chieftain of the navajo tribes yeah, do, in the, the navajo tribes in pull back a little bit. Uh, in the okay. west and they started what dismissing all of the alleged of the alleged tribal treaties with the united states okay. corporation wow do you understand mm -hmm. I used to talk to him weekly. He died now. I think they killed him, to be honest with you. But um, not unlike others who started being, you know, being real. Gerard Butler? No, that's not his name. It's not his name. Oh, okay. it's not, it's not his name. Okay. But um, but you'll do the research. I'll, I'll tell you later, when, as soon as I can think of it. But my mind is, you know, I'm not on that right now because I haven't talked to him in years. And they, he died a few years ago. But he played in the movie. For those who are interested, do the research on the chieftain of the Navajo tribes in the West. He also played in the movie 300, and you'll see. But anyway, back to point. Go ahead, back to point where we're well, I'm, I'm, talking, so I'm we're not all point. I'm kind of, for some reason, I'm stuck. <laughs> and when you, when, you, when you start really getting into this information, you'll see some of the politics that's happening right now with different people even in show business that are that are speaking up on the real history being fired off their jobs look they're trying to mess up my phone i can't get back in here well they're doing that too look i can't it all of a sudden it's um well i think i'll sit through much wait a minute wait a minute <laughs> well, me, hey. I, 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 it just like disappeared i can't believe this what the heck what have you said I don't know if we're still live or not because do you know they're also secretly putting the COVID virus on people's phones? I know I can't. No, I'm just telling you. Uh, all of a sudden, my thing has done something crazy, and I can't even. Oh. What the heck? I don't know what. Well, you keep talking. So I'll now know. the engine thing is now a problem. Yeah. See, because I see again, it is just like the Jew thing. You start talking about the Jew thing and. You see, because remember, that's the platform. What is the platform of our birthright that? This so-called Indian and Indian reservation and the so-called Jew all claiming our states and playing these fake identity games. One day they're a, a, a people, next day it's a religion. Oh, there we go. Okay. This thing got locked. Oh, I'm glad I didn't just hang it. Y'all, look. <laughs> okay. We're back. We're back. I, I've never seen that happen before. Oh, at well, all. don't be surprised at anything. <laughs> oh, my goodness. You already know that they, that, the, that the fake people called me a four for a war already, so you already, you expect that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, they said we're still alive. We hear you. Okay. <laughs> yeah, that's right. And it's funny that they will call you the fourth world war when we haven't allegedly had the third world war yes, but third. we have it was a now silent look at war King Alfred. it was a that silent war already in operation the silent war quiet war exactly okay and i haven't even you know i try to give a fly to break so <laughs> you know what have we done to them what have they been doing to us exactly. trying to poison our children they've been disappearing our children They've been sacrificing our children in rituals. Okay. Please. Here's a question from Perfect, the layout. Some of these names are low. Anyway, Dr. A confident heir, the estate must 
be released to them? What's the best way to structure the transfer with a deed of trust and promise there no mature in nine months? A deed in treaty would be trust. a deed in treaty okay. would be an allolial an allolial um estate claim. Um, or what's also called a lodial title and also referred to as Aboriginal titles. So do the research on Aboriginal titles. Aboriginal titles. Aboriginal titles in it and um a lodial titles. So when you in on our flash drive, you have we have uh, information about reversion about the reversion. That's what that's about. The reversioner, right? Yeah. So when you nationalize in law, that's actually what you're doing. You know, like, uh, I, I think sometimes when people look at that as separate because a lot of people don't talk like that, they don't, they're not aware that when you nationalize by law, you're doing that anyway. And so the deal is you need to recognize what I brought that up for is to let, you know how like people do things and don't necessarily know what they're doing. They think it's one thing and it's actually broader than they think it is much broader. A reversion of a state is the fact, the fact of a rightful heir or competent heir reclaiming his or her estate that has been under the jurisdiction of some either misrepresenting or belligerent party or fofer, as it were, who is, is, is a feudal equivalent of a trustee, which is what's been going on. When you nationalize, you're already stating for the record reversion of a state. No one's talk or put it this way. Very few people are telling our people that so they don't know when they go to more science stuff of America and nationalize. That's what they're doing. They're making reversion of a plate uh, of a state claim. And all I was doing is really writing an article to give people a cognizance of what nationalization in its effect also does and represents so therefore we must become competent in nationalization of what it really impairs so nationalization is also combined with decolonization which we brought up many times haven't we but how many people will keep looking at it as a separate subject when it's all from doing just because people ain't bringing it up doesn't mean that it doesn't remove the fact that it's all from doing the chief Phoenician princess says Hittites are the enemy too. Well, you can say we've been enemy to ourselves too. You can say that. But it's we still us. Yeah, well, dub raw. But a lot of your ancient what? Principles come from Hittites too. Yourself. See, th th this whole idea that we're different people is the problem. Do you understand? We've allowed the hybrids make us think we're different because we're in different territories. So the Canaanite, Moabites, Nubians, Sudanese are all the same people. The jurisdictional lines that are acknowledged today didn't exist then. Is it not true that we have a problem with fratricide amongst the Moors all over this country now calling themselves black and killing each other? Oh, yeah. So what are you talking about the Hittites? You see the concept that we keep on promoting that we don't recognize that we're out of order and that we have adopted self-hatred and is manifesting as fratricide as well as them using the experiments that they did with the with the uh experimenters in germany with animals that they converted into the political operations actually on the people dealing with sound wave technology microwave technology and mind control technology and the people don't know it's been activated on the people they even change sound frequency to cause the people to become violent with each other hmm. it's not so-called black culture they're being attacked psychic attacks also the other deal in the aquarium energy a lot of this technology is failing for them are we clear? A lot. Let's look at this, Dr. Nayon. A lot of technologies, and this is for all to think about. 
a lot of technologies that were developed within the Piscean energy cannot and will not function in Aquarian energy. It's not just the changing of the people's mind that's expressed in what is commonly called consciousness. It is also that the consciousness is affected by the energies of the heavens, having nothing to do with your personal opinions about it. But being aware of it is better in your interest so that you're not injured by it. You see the point? You know how it says when people don't understand that certain changes are cosmological, that they have no effect on it. And it's back to the issue where it reminds us when we get arrogant that God recognizes no person or station or station. What it's saying is nature recognizes no person or station. So the different titles that we give ourselves, the different designations that we claim in, in our self authorities or powers, etc., that are not harmonic with nature is ignored by nature. So our concept that God thinks that we're special because we say that we're this or we say that we that or the other, when you're outside of the recognition of your own pedigree or your brother or the honors of your mothers and your fathers, that nature don't recognize the bullshit that we keep on making up in the name of religion and idol God worship, although we've constructed those things. However, they become damaging and they also have run their course and they're dying. Get over it. Stop trying to save the ship and the ship uh, the, the sinking ship because it's not only sinking, it's burning. You know, the house is on fire. So let's go up to the bathroom. It ain't on fire. No, leave the house. Get out from under her. Come out from among them. You got you. I, I, we kind of hard headed. I'll say that much. And it's not that we have been told. It's, it's sort of like, you know, like um, we get into this thing, repeating things without really examining what we're saying truthfully and then putting it in context where it originated from as opposed to contemporary context. Do you understand what I'm saying to you? Mm -hmm. And therefore not having a clear understanding of the metaphors and the symbolisms of these meanings and the anthropomorphic distinctions presented from the real, if you get the point. And when that's not presented, uh, it, it allows all this gray area for confusion, which for the most part of the world has been suffering from. So this is a question. Should I divest my assets before November 3rd election? I was thinking of Switzerland. Yeah, better understand what I assets was, are and whether they're yours. I was thinking of Switzerland along with the elite. They believe Trump is going to mandate citizen vaccines starting with the military. Well, uh, it seems to me that if they're paying attention, it's not Trump. It's not it's Trump. Been the Democratic Party. There you go. I mean, they, they, they've been charging Trump with things that are already going on from the Ku Klux Klan Party. Say that louder, please, because people don't know. They've that. been putting on Trump things that are already been activated by the Ku Klux Klan Party, known as the Democratic Party, which is unconstitutional political platform altogether. That's not a, like I, what I've been saying for the last couple of years. I'm not defending Trump. I'm just giving you a view that's more harmonic with the truth that's going on. And understand none of them are your rulers. They are what? Designated to the corporation operations. However, because you don't like Trump, you don't need to lie on him. Do you understand what I'm saying to you? It's not in your interest. Keeps Caldwell says, Grand Sheik Cosmic Drink Bay, what's the proper way to process a home birth? A home birth in your own venue. It's called diversity of nationality. So now hold on. If you are a nation, and you are separate from the United States Corporation company operatives who have been pretending to be the nation. Are you still implying that you submit to a false jurisdiction that's known? to be a false jurisdiction, or do you start activating the pre-existing uh, constitutional order of treaties with all parties that you have been dealing with in international law, which you already have the right to do? 
or are you, when I'm talking to you, that's a plural, still operating to submit yourself to a foreign, alien, hostile, belligerent, sub, uh, uh, subversive jurisdiction that the people keep on alleging to be the government, which it is not provably, or are you going to start activating your existing government? Is there is there any um, in relationship again and support to that question? Uh, do you think it's incidental that Noble Drali made mention of Marcus Garvey? Who taught civics and government structure? Or was he giving you reference of assistance for study and help to activate? Not only that, in the uh, Constitution and bylaws for the Morris Holy Temple of Science, he says, what, the chairman and the moderator put in power to make law and to enforce law if he lives according to love, truth, peace, freedom, and justice, and it is known before the members of the Morris Holy Temple of Science. That's Act 1. Does that indicate self-government? Does it? Next question. Uh, let me see. There's another one. So. so the problem that we have is we have a lot of people holding office that clearly are not that not competent, and also many that upon examining i.e. civics, constitutions, treaties, and the Constitution for the United States, et cetera, et cetera, operative under treaty authority being the supreme law of the land, you'll find that uh, some people you've trusted in the name of leadership have not been honorable with you or to you. Which kind of goes into this question from Joanna Hinn. It seems like the masses will be turned off by ignorance and or fear, but how will one be able to differentiate the true, the true more the true more science and the misuse of the true science by the Illuminati? All right, here we go. Go back to the state of mind of your ancient mothers and fathers, and you'll find that the Illuminati is simply hybrid Europeans claiming your knowledge and using the dark side. There you go. So you, meaning that if you go back to the root of things, you yourself will answer your own question. What people keep looking for, and I think it, it is not in our interest, they keep looking for people who are in position of alleged authority or alleged title to give them red and blue pill answers when they themselves need to become involved and start studying. Shamari Seven has a question. Can we petition Congress to open the DOS roles, recalib recap recalibrate definition Native American to include more and create new they tribe. They already have with the treaties tribe, and everything. New tribe and establish a reservation now, with retroactive benefits from the Sherman Act. Here we go where the people keep on trying to get into a jurisdiction that they don't belong and they keep giving them authority or seeking to rescind their right of claim and give authority to a clearly de facto political platform, which is the problem, which is why we need to study, because we need to understand political jurisdiction. Not only subject matter jurisdiction, not only in personam jurisdiction, not only territorial jurisdiction, but the subcategory natures of political jurisdiction that are subsequent by default of international law. And the question indicates that the being is not clear on that. But if you study political jurisdiction, uh, subject matter jurisdiction, in personam jurisdiction and territorial jurisdiction, not only will you answer that question for yourself, but for others. And so therefore, the fundamentals of the reason that, that question orients, which is logical, will be easily solved when the people start studying. And of course, which means we got to start what? Teaching our own and stop in, uh, expecting those who have been abusing us internally, foreign or domestic, to tell the truth because they've already by the record showed that they have no intentions of helping the people. That means 
All we got is us. You better start acting like it. Um, what I say? Okay. Jamar Wilson said, Marcus Garvey said, go home. And Noble, I guess Noble Ali, Noble Ali, who was hidden, said to remember our ancients. Yes, and the ancients is home. So he just told you who the home was, where the home was. So but, the home, hold on. But Garvey was when, taken saying back to Africa. At, well, you which is part of which is part of home. Know, see, yeah. I know it is part of home. Your home is in the mind. What Garvey was talking about that is mi totally misrepresented. He's talking about inter Pan African trade. He wasn't talking about what Monroe and Bilbo was talking about taking 20 million Africans off their own land and taking them to that side. He was talking about initiating international trade with Africa and coming out of the jurisdiction of the Europeans. This is the reason why they set up his photographer, etc., and others were CIA agents who undermined him. Well, what do you, this is not, we're, 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 we're three hours yeah. and 10 minutes. So we're, yeah. this is a question from me. Um, recently, a so-called Native American tribe was able to, I, I heard, to get land back in Oklahoma. They start arguing the land, etc., according to treaty. Right. What the, what now, implication and all does it have for us for Moors? Because we're supposed to be doing the same thing. So they were actually given land that actually is Moors land. No, well, because because they are Moors. Well, now hold on. If they're the true now nine now let's go into detail of the of the issue. What anyone needs to do is start looking at the congressional records and looking at the detail of what transpired. And I can guarantee you what they were doing was enforcing treaty. I'm telling you, that's what they were doing. And that's what we need to do. Oh, what the, duh. That's what constitutional Isn't form, that what, what uh, Abdullah and, and Shem course, were talking that's about? What, but that's what Joel is saying. When he says enforce the constitution, he's talking Article 3. And Article 6, which is the enforcement of the treaty and designates the obligations of these people whom you are assuming to be sovereign, who dag on ain't, who've been living off your virtues, but we have not activated. You see the problem? See, this is what it is. The people have this tendency to argue the dishonor among the hybrid Europeans and are not look, not looking at the dishonor among us. You can't claim to be black and enforce no treaty on this planet. You can't claim black and then be a sovereign anywhere on this planet. You can't claim black and be heritable by law. So why do they keep on defending the black tag when they know that they're not black? But because they've adopted and fallen in love with the brand and so they now, they, they're trying to insist that it's African identity. Remember, a few decades ago, they was arguing capitalizing Negro and Black. Because it wasn't, it would be prior, it wasn't designated, it wasn't capitalized. Why? Because it's not proper. Weren't they arguing for it to be capitalized? What does that tell you? That just exposes a consciousness that is not a pedigree. See, people need to pay attention to the record and itself, it answers itself. Is that we've allowed people among ourselves to promote false information that's valid simply because we want to attach to it. You see the point? Mm -hmm. You can't claim a sovereignty under the fraud. You can't be a chattel translation in connotative linguistic, meaning of uh, 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 transliteration. You can't be a slave and own property, not even so. That's why a so-called black can't be president. You get the point? That's when that's why when Tom Joyner had said to Barack Obama, Mr. Obama, how does it feel to be the first black president? He says, I'm not black. Black's a dead status. Now, how come nobody emphasizes that when that's on the record? And then go behind it and look what he was talking about. He said, Barack H. Obama said black is a, is a dead status. 
and that he's not black. And how many people keep on turning around saying he was a black president? Everybody. Oh, well. So what does it indicate? They have not been paying attention when they've been told the truth because they're trying to do what? Preserve a false platform and then claim rights under it. You ain't gonna have, it ain't gonna happen. It's a dead status. Yeah. That's not opinion. He said it. Was he correct? Absolutely. Was he abandoning the so-called black community? No. He was giving them information to raise them up if they were willing to take it. What's he supposed to do? Kiss their asses? He certainly told them. What's he telling you? If I'm not black, you ain't either, y'all. Duh. Duh, bro. What did Rahm Emanuel say who belonged to the to the uh, 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 um, uh, um, Obama administration two years or a year before he went to he cooked and exposed that the American Constitution comes from uh, uh, Muslim law? Didn't Rahm Emanuel do a proclamation telling about us being the people of the land and also directly about Noble Ali? And he's a he's a, a, a hybrid Jew. He telling the history. And then you have subsequently about 30, uh, or may, maybe it might be a little more, that's a rough count, Don't worry. of mayors and governors around the country who have repeated the same thing in slightly different words, but in principle, the same thing, that the Moors are the indigenous people of this country, of this land, and that Noble Dali restored, i.e., their right of claim. Yeah, most yeah, you know, we we it happened also in here in Wilmington, and I do realize I remember the group brought that information. So the groups will bring the information to the mayors, but the, the truth is if it's something in what they bring that they don't agree with, they wouldn't put it in there. Exactly. They wouldn't put their signature on it. Also, when you're looking at um resolution 75 from the con from the congressional record, and um I think in Philadelphia 1202, I think that's the number, resolution 1202, something like that, from Cohen. They're all saying it. Now, the point that I'm making to you, Dr. Nail, it's not being denied by European people in government, hybrid. Why is it so difficult for our people to comprehend it from their own? Except there's psychological mental blocks. Well, um, we have gone in three hours and 17 minutes, yeah. what you have, not me. And um, does that mean that all Moors aren't black? It means that no Moors oh, are black. That means, that means no That Moors means are. Martians aren't green people. <laughs> it means that hybrid Europeans are not white people. Person it means that Chinese are not yellow people. It means that other Africans of the Iberian Peninsula are not brown people. It means that people from the depths of Africa are not the blue people. Duh. This is totally off subject, but this person has put this question here like, about five times so i'm guessing it's something that is near and dear to them what is your thoughts if you have any on on women who wants to go to fertility clinic to try to have a child any of us that go to the hybrid europeans medical industry military operations is not thinking that, they, that you've already been attacked if you go back into your record and that you've been sterilized. You go amongst them for a cold and they'll sterilize you secretly. You let them go into your bloodstream any kind of way, especially Asiatic African women. It's also already, not my opinion, but part of their program of genocide is to sterilize these women of Asiatic African descent 
as early as possible. We ain't talking about a person that can't get pregnant naturally and wanting to go. They to need to look them. back in their record and see if they've been vaccinated by them mm -hmm. or if they've been in, spent any time in the hospital where they've allowed them to go in their bloodstream mm -hmm. and then try to calculate at the time when their periods started acting up and they didn't quite understand how or why and it never dawned on them that they've been sterilized because mm -hmm. it never dawned on them that these people are doing this to our people yep past and present eugenics of course it is the eugenics is part of the programming of birthright theft it's not just the politics our people keep trusting these people who clearly clearly are the enemies of their mothers and fathers and thus the enemies of you and what point do you understand that their projection on reducing the population is not something in the future that they've been doing it all a while all the while and as soon as you put your body to them, one of the first things they're going to do in any and all vaccinations and procedures concerning Aboriginal women is to sterilize them, including issuing condoms that are contaminated with HIV and other diseases and sterilization chemicals. That's a fact. Why do you think many of these Africans on the other side all of a sudden in late in these late years will start telling them, y'all assholes, don't bring the vaccines here because we ain't having it? And why do you think they've been killing now when you they have World Health Organization whose troops going into different African countries, they're actually killing them and they ain't publishing it? That they're killing them and they now they have a problem. Why? Because somebody started paying attention to what's been going on in Africa all around the world. Finally, so-called summer leaders are now starting to try to protect the people. Someone asked whether or not people of India were more, are more. Same thing with them. More. If you look in, go in the dictionary. For those of you, go in the dictionary and then look up Filipinos, Indians, and they'll call them Mohammedans, what do you think they're saying? What do you think they're really telling you? They're telling you that they're Muslims. When they say they're Muslims, what are they really implying? They're Sabian Moors or their descendants. Get over it. Get over it and stop trying not to be who you are. Somebody says, uh, what is the significance of the three fifth? human perspective chattel property and you notice that they they give a designation of negro or black or color why are they three fifths three three fifths what's the other two fifths name and nationality they're outside of the human family i.e they're chattels are we clear chattel means what cattle is french so, question, should we use quiet title suits to claim land? Whatever, better be in your proper person. Answer your own question. Mm -hmm. okay. So now let's, let's, tell, let's tell the truth. So do the research in international law. What so-called black people did a treaty or, or establish any government anywhere on the planet Earth? what black nation there ain't no such thing that's the whole point so if china is enforcing a treaty with russia or any other designated nation do they say the yellow people or do they say manchurian or china do you understand the fact that our people is are in mysticism with this whole black brand thing is is amazing that people can't think now you understand why they're called wards of the state 
-hmm. And also that was that hybrid European wrote that book, The Bell, Bell Curve, and said that these people can't think the, the, past the level, level of a monkey. And then our people get upset when he's actually telling them the truth. Well, he's telling them that there's so much on the spell, you just like Calvin Coolidge says, to give these niggers back Islam would be like putting a pair of pants on the horse. As long as I keep my schools and churches open, you won't get 500 to follow me. And if you do, I'll back you with my army and navy. Of course, he got thousands, and of course, that's when the infiltration took place into the Moorish movement, which you'll see in the FBI papers that some of these grand sheets don't want to talk about. But COVID has broken the spell for a has lot it? of that. No, no. no COVID just did nothing. Well, whatever this thing no, is no, happening. No, 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 no. no. People are going, no, okay. Well, let's, let's back off. Okay, let's talk about Let's it. stop putting the inanimate things and things that are engineered in front of the creators of it. Do you think they meant to have people lose their... Yes, their their businesses, lives, and everything else. No, no, no. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about the people that were mesmerized about going to church, mosques, and synagogue. Who now, after all of this, that's a default situation. That is. That's a default situation. Okay, so in other words, that's in a other casualty. Words, they set a trap and they stepping in it at the same time. Okay, they didn't mean to necessarily do that, but it happened. Because this is what it is. Their reign is over. They're making desperate moves. And in the process, also, let's look at this. Let's for those who are looking at this this issue that they're arguing with Trump. From a law position in relationship to that jurisdiction, at any time, Donald Trump, through his administration of um, persons who were put in place to so-called correct some of the corruption in these many subdivisional agencies at any time could stop most of this stuff by indicting these people why is a lot of this stuff allowed to happen so that the people can wake up because they need to get kicked in the ass to learn because it don't just like when you're talking about this this constant thing of people knowing that we're in that black knowing black means spots white spot and bare pale covers and he's still trying to make it or argue that it's an African identity. When it is etymologically not, historically not, and factually not. Do you understand? But yet they keep arguing it, which means they don't want to let it go. Do you understand? However, they want the rights that go with nationality and human rights. When black and Negro is not part of human family. Moors, that, that's where the record shows who made the treaties, who ruled the earth, Moors, not blacks. You, you see the point? So in order to try to justify themselves, don't black mean Moor? Don't black mean Sudan? Don't black mean the Ethiopian? Don't black mean Eritrean? You notice how this dictionary with all these African words means black? In other words, they're trying to make it have a meaning that it has none. They're trying to connect it to it. You see the point? It, it, it's like it's even a thinking person, a child can see that this doesn't make sense. They're saying that Ethiopian means black. Egypt means black. Sudan means Nubia means black. You line your asses off. There's nothing wrong with the word black, but it doesn't mean any of that. It means white spot and pale colors. That's what it means. Now, for those of you who who can read, I know a lot of people really, really, really can't. The rule is etymology. Go into a dictionary that has an etymology in the back of the dictionary and go to a, 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 a thesaurus or etymology dictionary and look up the word black. And it's going to tell you, it's not going to say proper noun. It's going to have adjective then it's going to take you to its origin middle english then it takes you to its high german origin o h g and then it's going to take you to the etymology root which is beel b h e l and it means 
in its multiple meaning, blanket, blonde, blank, pale colors, beluga, white spot. What does that have to do with Nubia? What does that have to do with Ethiopia, Abyssinia, Eritrea, Mesopotamia, Hittite, Canaanite, Moabite? Other than the fact that it is known in recorded history that the hybrid Europeans, particularly in the Western Hemisphere, designated Moors who were defeated or compromised as persons of color and or black Negroes. That's documented fact. Now, how is it that these people are black just because the hybrid Europeans who conquered them designated that under a caste system, which is a status, caste, not a pedigree identity. That's fact, not opinion. And the fact that people keep on trying to legitimize it indicates compromise, aside from ignorance that goes with it. Next. Uh, let me see. Yeah, y'all, excuse me, I'm a little teepee here. Yeah, we're going to let you go. Uh, yeah, teepee. If you go. In yeah. Getting teepee. Yeah, he's just, yeah, he's just getting a little giddy right now. Can you speak but, on how important it is to eat clean and prepare for the mission at hand? Uh, uh, oh, it is important. You said it. What are some beneficial books that we can study for research? Google is the best source for studying and researching. All right. Uh, now, Moorish Empire in Spain, series of books, it's a, a, a set of books. Um, Ancient and Modern Britons by David McRitchie. Kybalion, i.e., which the blue book which is uh, used in all secret societies. Um, and that's just for starters. The original congressional records designating the uh, list of presidents for the United States and recognize that you've been lied to and start recognizing that the supercision of that constitution are the treaties and also recognizing that the first president legitimate for the Republic of the United States, John Hanson, is a more. Oh, uh, that's just for starter. That'll keep you busy for a while. And in the process, it'll lead you to other information. And uh, you'll be able to help mentally and socially, politically redeem a lot of people, including your family members. Because the record will become self-evident, and also it will show it will show you that uh, the so-called scholars who have been conveniently not uh, dealing with these subject matters that they're clearly compromised, and that is it's not accidental that they're not talking about these things. Because any scholar in doing any research in European history will find Moorish history. That's number one and world history that they'll find more history meaning that it's unavoidable that's my point and this whole idea that it's only um concentrated in south asia that we call africa today is a falsehood and a lie meaning that as soon as you start studying african history you're going to go immediately into more history immediately any scholar so for them to pretend that this is some oddball subject. They only do getting away with children that still have what you call a minor mind or who are politically still, still uh, within the confines of minority, which is a social status and not numbers. In other words, they're still boys and girls, mentally, although they're not wearing diapers mentally, politically, they're, they're still in diapers. 
I also, I recommend, I like to put it up there, um, getting the membership to scribd.com mm -hmm. because there was a lot of, of reference. Matter of fact, um, all the Hakeem, is it Hakeem Bay? Oh. Moorish Paradigm is on it. In book one of Moorish Paradigm well, alone, Hakeem is one there is 105 scholars. books listed. Oh, yes. Yeah. Uh, in that, but they got all of his. Yes. And there's a lot of lot, lot, lot of stuff on this. All you have to do is Google Morsh. I mean, not Google. I mean, search for Morsh yeah. in Scribd.com. Yes. And what for nine ninety five a month, which I pay. I I don't even purchase many books anymore because I look yeah. here, I find them here first, and they have a lot, a lot. They got the oh, brown, yeah. the brown book, and and then also one of your most awarded scholars, uh, Joel A. Rogers. Mm -hmm. One of his books, Nature Knows No Color Line. Look at this, the the Huvoli the Huvolution of Sacred Mirror Science by Noble Timothy um Myers L. It's well, so many this all this is it's on script. all over the place. It's so many things. You mean that you what we have, the advantage that we have in these days is that you have a a a, a, a high number of honorable scholars that are that are now educating and making the people erudite in these fundamentals which they should have known decades ago all you got to do is start getting into the subject matter and it'll come up you know how they say now it is for real seeking ye will find you know as you start looking for the truth for real don't worry it will find you and then it'll start rolling. Yeah, a lot, a lot there. Well, listen, I'm not going to, you're tired. I'm tired. We've gone 36 minutes over oh, time. Yeah. want to thank everybody for. Hope we've done some good. Yeah, wanna thank every, we want to thank everybody for tuning in. We want to encourage you to support um, the House of Reawakening Minds. We are doing as much as we can we try to keep something there's something on almost every day uh, something if it's not something directly on um on here it's either you know you got sister tamara doing you know the state of the nationals yes. and with blog talk you have i'm doing office hours with dr g every tuesday mm. matter of fact this coming tuesday um i close out my um august super tuesdays with um both a seat brother Arsir, Duke of tears and sister Selena yes. Cordova the belt had both of them in the preceding weeks and together they will be on on Tuesday night. I think this Sunday I'll be doing um I think this is the Sunday if mm. I'm not mistaken that I'll be on doing the, the You're show always doing something. You already know it. See? Yeah, you know yeah. you need to stop counting the days I'm and just do what you do. I'm losing <laughs> track of, of days. Either if yeah. I'm not on this Sunday with brother mm. Amaru in open circle gathering which is at um Love noon it. noon on every other Sunday. If not this Sunday, then it's next Sunday. I will, you know, I don't know. But we we come. So there's something that the House of Reawakening Minds always. Is, is always bringing to you. So your support is greatly appreciated, greatly needed. Thank you all. We certainly, you know, don't want Grand Sheik spending all of this time and, and Brother Abdullah, Brother Shem spending so much time uh, uh, and even myself giving, 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 giving. Our, our energy with very you know little i i say this often it was over some are going now there's still over over like there's probably about 1100 people between the two things on right now mm. if everyone sent us one one note we would do so good and some of you do better than that and we appreciate it we don't we don't want to beg but we just want you to know that we've been closed down our building but we have not shut down on what we're bringing to you right. and we want to open up the building soon I'm, I'm very appreciative of what united republic of morocco is doing and all the work that grand sheik is putting in all the blood sweat and tears he's trying to leave here and go back to do some work which i hope he will not tonight yeah. <laughs> i hope he's so tired that he's going to go and yeah. rest instead of going back to do work this tonight but this is his dedication you all so we appreciate you. I appreciate you. And um, as I said, if I'm not back on Sunday <laughs> with Brother Aaron Rue for Open Circle Gathering, because I'm I'm losing track of <laughs> time, um, I think it is this Sunday at 12. We'll definitely be back on Tuesday at uh, 8 p.m. for office hours with Dr. G. And we will have Brother Asir and Sister Selena on for that show. So. 
We want you to tune in, tell a friend. You know, I don't I don't holler thumbs up and all that stuff and like, but I hope you are liking and um and and um subscribing. We appreciate that. You know, don't just come on, but subscribe so you get a notification. Um, give us the like. It's uh, we always have. Look, we all always see a, a, a mean face up here. Every show I do, there's a mean face. I'm convinced that it's the same person. Mm-hmm. And I'm wondering, like, if you hate what we do so much, why you come on here? Mm-hmm. But anyway, you, you got to have your detractor. So yeah. um, we appreciate you all. Um, we thank you so very much. Um, I don't know. Mm-hmm. Somebody wanted to know where the land is um, under the water. I don't know. Mm-hmm. Uh, we're going to go. We're going to go right now. We thank you so much. And... Um, we are appreciative of you joining in with us. So with that, we bid you a fond farewell and a and a glorious rest of your night. Thank you so so much. Peace. So let's look at love this and light. We're out. Peace.